Welcome to the fantasy audiobook, Man and Pirates, The Beginning of the Interception of the Surgery Fruit. Chapter 41. Be sensible in the future. Anyway, the mountain and the sea will never meet again. Seeing that Shanks was still silent, Sig thought Shanks was afraid of them. But Shanks still said nothing. He lowered his head and began to pick up the broken bottles for Machino. Seeing this scene, Sig swung his sword directly. With just one blow, all the wine glasses on the bar were broken. Not only Shanks's, but also Lin N and Baby Fives were broken. Don't you like cleaning? Now you can clean it well. Sig looked at everything on the bar, and he suddenly felt happy. B-A-B-Y-5, beat this guy who ruined the atmosphere. Lin N saw the few drops of wine stains on his collar, and his mood suddenly became very unhappy. Shanks was a big pirate with a bounty of 1.04 billion baileys. He didn't take a small person like Sig seriously at all. But Lin is not Shanks. He obviously didn't provoke anyone, but now Sig has affected him. What did you say, kid? Sig was about to leave, but now he focused on Lin. Lin was too lazy to talk nonsense with such a weakling, so he directly used his fruit ability. Room, the operating space opened, and Baby Five and the Bandit King Sig and others were all moved outside the tavern. Ms. Machino's tavern is already in chaos today, and I can't cause trouble for you, Miss Machino. Lin said to the stunned Machino. Lin, are you also a fruit ability user? When Luffy saw Lin's move, his eyes flashed with admiration. Luffy was about to explode when he saw that bandit treat Shanks like this before. And Lin used a powerful fruit ability as soon as he made a move. Although Luffy himself is also a person with special abilities, he can hardly control his body now, and his fighting ability is even worse than when he hasn't eaten the fruit. Seeing that Lin An can use the power of the fruit so freely, Luffy feels very envious. It is indeed the power of the fruit. I am a surgeon who has eaten the surgery fruit. Lin An said to Luffy. Very strange power of the fruit. Beckman sensed that Sig and others appeared outside the tavern in an instant, and a strange color appeared in his eyes. Such a fruit ability will be of great help in actual combat. No wonder Lin An dared to appear in the windmill village so confidently. How did we appear outside? It must be the trick of that kid just now. The bandit King Sig didn't even figure out how he came to the outside of the tavern, and he was ready to rush in and kill Lin An angrily. Hey, Lin An asked me to beat you up. If you go in again, I will be in trouble. The voice of Baby Five sounded behind them. Kill her. Sieg was a bandit. Years of fighting had made his heart as cold as the knife in his hand. Although Baby Five looked very cute, Sieg didn't feel anything. Little girl, you have offended Lord Sieg. You are unlucky. The two bandits raised their spears with a grin. They wanted to kill Baby Five. Pa. Two gunshots were heard, and the guns in the hands of the two pirates were shot down by B.A.B.Y. 5. Good marksmanship. Jesus Boo's eyes lit up. As a sniper, that was his joy when he saw a master of gunsmanship. The only difference between the pistols of traditional gunmen and those of Baby 5 was that she turned her two pistols into her own hands. Another demon ability user, and one who can turn into a weapon. The red hair pirates felt a touch of surprise again. In the Grand Line, there are many Devil Fruit users, but this is the first time they have seen two people with the same ability in the East China Sea. Moreover, although Baby 5 is a girl, her physique is stronger than that of the bandit King Sig. Little Devil, who do you think you are? Do you want to scare me like this? Sig drew his knife to block a bullet from Baby 5, and he chopped directly at Baby 5. It must be said that Sig, who has a bounty of 8 million Baileys, has a little strength. Just a little, but not much. Facing Sig's attack, Baby Five's left hand turned into a long sword, and she actually blocked the sword that was chopped with both hands with one hand. Sig had never encountered such an insult before, and his face turned red. He never thought that his strength could be suppressed by a girl with one hand. That's it, Sig. Baby Five's other arm turned into the pistol was already pointed at Sig, and if she had the slightest thought, Sig's head would explode. But when Baby Five was about to kill Sig, a hand grabbed Baby Five's gun. Let's stop here, Shanks said to Baby Five, and Lin En didn't even notice when Shanks left the tavern. Sig realized at this moment that he seemed to have saved his life. He didn't even say a harsh word, and he stumbled away. 
Baby Five looked at Lin En, and when she saw Lin En nod to her, she took back the weapon she had conjured. She was just Lin En's subordinate, not Shank's subordinate. Even if Shank's was a big pirate, he couldn't order himself. When the remaining bandits saw Sig running away, they also ran away in a hurry. Shanks, you are a great pirate. It's okay that you were insulted by him, but why did you save him? Lin En also walked out of the tavern at this time. Looking at Sig who was leaving, Lin En asked Shanks. I just don't want this peaceful village to be stained with blood. Shanks smiled faintly. Hey, Shanks, you seemed very embarrassed just now. The members of the Red Hair Pirates walked out of the tavern and laughed at Shanks. Hey, Shanks was bullied just now, how can you still laugh? Aren't you partners? Luffy is still young, and he has no idea why the Red Hair Pirates did this. They are obviously very strong, and Sig and the others can deal with it in an instant. You misunderstood Shanks, Luffy. In Shanks' eyes, those people are already dead, and he is not worth getting angry about it. Lin En said to Luffy. But, but they all escaped unscathed. Luffy felt puzzled. They can't escape. Only when he returns to his lair can we catch them all in one fell swoop. Lin En smiled. Lin En, those trackers are all gathered in one place and are not moving. Baby Five said to Lin En. Baby Five had put trackers on those pirates before they left. Killing one sig is easy, but what if the pirates attack Windmill Village after the red hair pirates and Lin En leave? So Lin En was ready to catch them all in one fell swoop. Ka ka ka. After a while of changes, 12 rockets of Mark armor appeared on Baby Five's shoulders, and those 12 rockets turned into mysterious trajectories and flew towards the forest. Boom, a huge ball of fire burst out, and then Luffy felt a violent vibration, and the lair of the bandit King Sig was blown up into the sky. Have you learned it, Luffy? Lin asked Luffy, who was already a little dazed. Baby Five, your transformation just now was so cool, can you help me make one too? Luffy's eyes glowed with gold, and he said to Baby Five while entangled with her. No man can resist the charm of mecha and cannons, even the little Luffy in front of him is no exception. B-A-B-Y-5, the explosion distance is at least 15 kilometers away from us, can your weapon attack so far? Jesus looked at the hilltop that had disappeared for half, and his face became very serious. As a sniper, he knew how terrible this distance was. At such a long distance, even the observation hockey may not be able to see so far, let alone vision. Clearly, he did not sense that Baby Five released the observation hockey just now, how did she aim so far? I use a tracker, I can sense the position of the tracker within 5 kilometers. A small thing appeared in Baby Five's hand. No one could imagine that such a small thing was the root cause of Sig's death. You can't even see the enemy, and you can kill people with just a vague position. Has the sniping on the sea reached this level? Although Jesus B.U. couldn't understand the details, he was shocked. Lin En said that what I did was not sniping, but fire coverage. Baby Five said to Jesus B.U. What if an enemy escapes from your fire coverage? After all, for those who have mastered the armed color domineering, the attack just now is terrible, but it is definitely not a dead end. As a professional sniper, he asked a very professional question. Then just bomb again with more powerful firepower. Lin En said, if you don't have enough physical strength, you can strike accurately, and if you have enough physical strength, you can use fire coverage. This is my way of firepower. Baby Five blinked her big eyes and said to Jesus be you. That makes sense. I'm waiting for the day when you become a top sniper. Jesus looked at B-A-B-Y-5 in front of him. He had a feeling that the little girl in maid costume in front of him would become his powerful opponent in the future. Shanks, let's have a fight. Lin En looked at Shanks in front of him, and a bone sword condensed in his hand. Are you still a swordsman? Feeling Lin En's change, Shanks' eyes flashed with surprise. If you have heard of my deeds, even if you don't draw your sword to me, you should understand the gap between you and me, right? Shanks did not draw his sword griffin at the first time. Instead, he persuaded Lin En with a serious face. I know you are a top swordsman. You have fought against the world's strongest swordsman Hawkeye many times without a clear winner. Lin En told Shanks deeds. Since you know my strength and dare to challenge me, it seems that you are not ignorant, you are really courageous. Shanks laughed. 
I know you have the qualifications to rule the new world and become the pirate emperor, but I believe I will not stop at Windmill Village. Lin En has absolute confidence in his own strength. Unlike those swordsmen who like to enjoy fighting, I will use a special move as soon as I strike. Are you sure you can withstand it? A smile appeared in Shank's eyes, and he did not underestimate Lin En because of this. Such courage can make Lin En go further, which is what every strong man needs to have. If I die under your sword, it means that I am just a man like this. What qualifications do I have to go to the new world? Lin En said to Shanks. Well said, I accept your challenge. Shanks finally recognized Lin En, and he pulled out his sword Griffin. This is a famous sword shaped like a western sword. According to Lin En's speculation, the sword in front of him is likely to be a supreme sword. Lin En, let me turn into a sword to help you. Although Baby 5 is not a swordsman, she also knows the goods. This sword is a famous sword. Although Lin En's bone sword is as hard as traditional steel, it is definitely not as good as Shank's sword. The sword of a swordsman is very important to a swordsman. Baby 5 can't let Lin En lose at the beginning. This is a duel between Shanks and me. If you help, it won't be a duel. Lin En directly rejected Baby 5. It doesn't matter. You can fight together. Shanks didn't care about it. With his strength, the number of people in front of him has no meaning at all. Even if there are more enemies, they can't defeat him by numbers. Lin En still refused. Seeing that Shanks was going to duel with Lin, the members of the Red Hair Pirates directly cleared a space of hundreds of meters for the two. Lin and Shanks stood a hundred meters apart with swords in hand. Before Lin used the power of the Operation Fruit to teleport in front of Shanks, Shanks's observation hockey had predicted this and he drew his sword in advance. As soon as Griffin was unsheathed, Lin felt that all the light between heaven and earth had been lost. His observation hockey could no longer sense anything, and even his operation space was compressed to a very small range. Did Shanks use the Conqueror hockey in this sword? Feeling the breath emitted by Shanks, Lackey Lu showed a look of surprise on his face. He originally thought that Shanks was joking when he told Lin that he would do his best to attack, after all, the gap between Shanks and Lin's strength was too big. Unexpectedly, what Shanks said was true, and he did not hold back on Lin. Although the move in front of him was not done with all his strength, it had already used 70% of Shanks' strength. Come on, you must survive, Lin. Baby Five saw the slash that almost instantly arrived in front of Lin, and she silently prayed for Lin in her heart. Lin had never felt as trapped in a life and death crisis as today. Even though he was almost unable to move due to the pressure of Shanks's blow, he still raised the sword in his hand with difficulty. Facing Shanks' slash, he stabbed straight at Shanks' sword move. Crack, facing the fierce slash, the bone sword covered with armament hockey in Lin's hand turned into fragments in an instant. His armament hockey was incomparable to Shanks' armament hockey, which had been immersed in it for many years. As soon as the battle started, Lin's armament hockey was shattered. Rune Protective Suit This is the ability developed by Lin based on the antibacterial armament developed by Law in the original plot. This is also the first defensive ability of the Operation Fruit. The fierce slash pushed Lin back continuously, but it could not cut through the barrier. Blocked Lin An actually blocked Shanks' attack. The pirates of the Red Hair Pirates did not expect that Lin An could have such strength. And Baby Five's tense nerves were slightly relieved. In any case, Lin An's life was saved. Using the power of the surgery fruit consumes a lot of Lin's physical strength, but it is nothing compared to Shanks' slash and the physical strength that can resist consumption. I am afraid that before Shanks' slash is exhausted, Lin will be defeated because of exhaustion. Lin decisively used teleportation to avoid this attack. This slash flew towards the forest, and the trees in the forest were immediately cut in half. For a moment, there was a sound of crackling. Luffy's eyes widened, and he finally saw what a real strong man is. Before, he thought that his punching speed was as fast as a pistol and he was about to defeat Shanks, but now he realized that he was still far away. So this is the real strength of Shanks, no wonder he didn't take me out to sea. Only then did Luffy understand. You are still young now, Luffy, when you grow up you will have such strength. Jesus be you comforted Luffy. Looking at Luffy, who is the same age as his son, for some reason, Jesus be you always thinks of his son when he sees Luffy. Well, 
I will definitely become as strong as Shanks in the future. Luffy waved his fist to cheer himself up. You can actually take my sword, it's amazing. Shanks praised Lin En. Shanks had already taken Lin En's fruit ability into account in the previous attack, but he didn't expect Lin En to resolve it with that weird ability. That's just my fruit ability, not swordsmanship, it's nothing. Lin En shook his head and said. Then let me see your swordsmanship. A smile appeared on Shanks' face. He hadn't heard of any powerful swordsman in the East China Sea. Shanks wanted to see what kind of swordsmanship Lin An had learned by running from the strongest North Sea to the East China Sea. As you wish, Lin An appeared in front of Shanks with a teleportation, and he made a bone sword again and slashed at Shanks. Shanks's observation hockey had already noticed it, and before Lin's sword came, his griffin had already made defensive moves. Ding ding ding. In less than a second, the two swords had collided many times. Twenty-five times, this Lin swung twenty-five times in one second. Ben Beckman counted the number of times the two swords collided, and he found a terrifying thing, Lin swung the sword twenty-five times in just one second. Twenty-five swords in one second, even I find it difficult to complete, this kid in front of me actually. Navigator Bendix Snake's face showed shock. He is also good at two-sword flow, but for him, Lin's action is also difficult to complete. In order to achieve 25 swords in one second, in addition to requiring a very superb physique, you also need to have extraordinary control over your body. Although the boy in front of him is slightly weaker in hockey, his physique is not inferior to theirs. Not only that, didn't you notice that Lin En swung his sword and chopped at the same spot every time? He swung his sword 25 times, and the position of each sword was exactly the same. Jesus B.U. is a sniper, and he has vision that most people don't have. He saw clearly that Lin An was not swinging his sword randomly, and each of his swords chopped at the weakest point of Shanks's domineering. Unfortunately, Shanks's armed color domineering was too strong. Even if Lin An could find that weakness and swung his sword 25 times, he couldn't break Shanks' defense. What a unique sword art. This is the first time I have seen such a fast sword art. I didn't expect that there is such a magical sword art in the East China Sea. Shanks' face showed surprise. Although Lin En's strength was not strong, Shanks could feel the horror of this sword art. This is the sword art I realized by myself. Lin En replied to Shanks. This is not a sword art, but only an application of sword art. Lin En just used the technique of cutting iron, using the observation hockey to detect weaknesses, and then using the sword hardened by the armament hockey to cut directly at the weaknesses. As for being able to cut so many times, it is still the precise control of the body by the operation fruit. As long as Lin En wants to cut, under the precise control of his body, his sword will never deviate by a millimeter. It's amazing that you can create your own swordsmanship. Shanks praised again. The swordsmanship system on this sea is very mature, and few people can practice their own swordsmanship. For example, his swordsmanship comes from his captain, the Pirate King Galdi. Roger. It is said that the Pirate King Roger has a sword skill called God Avoidance. I wonder if you know it. Lin An looked at Shanks and asked Shanks suddenly. You actually know the Divine Repellent. There was some surprise in Shanks' tone. Those who know the divine repellent are the remnants of the old times on the sea. At Lin's age, he should not know this move. Divine repellent, the name sounds very domineering. Shanks, when did you actually practice such a trick? The members of the Red Hair Pirates were all surprised. They and Shanks were inseparable, and they didn't know that Shanks had such a trump card. I have only recently practiced the divine repellent. This move is used to challenge those pirate emperors. Although Shanks didn't say it clearly, Lin knew what Shanks meant. Shanks said that he couldn't withstand this blow and he would die. I won't die. Lin smiled brightly at Shanks. Although Shanks didn't know where Lin's confidence came from, he still satisfied Lin. In an instant, Shanks's surging domineering aura spread out, and the clouds in the sky were dispersed. Those domineering colors entangled Griffin, and then an unavoidable slash flew straight towards Lin. Lin stared at the blow directly. Under the pressure of this blow, Lin felt his brain exploded, and an equally terrifying breath emanated. Domineering color domineering, this is also domineering color domineering. Under the pressure of Shanks' domineering color domineering, Lin's domineering color domineering awakened. Domineering color, 
I didn't expect to see domineering color domineering on Lin. Ben Beckman narrowed his eyes and looked at Lin, who was shrouded in the light of God's avoidance. For the first time, there was a shock in his eyes. Lin actually has the qualifications to become a king, no wonder he wants to challenge Shanks. Jesus B. You also showed a shocked look. Wherever the gods' avoidance passed, everything was destroyed. But the red hair pirates knew that Lin was still alive, and their observation color domineering could still sense Lin's location. Ha ha ha, it worked, my conqueror hockey has awakened. Lin En's loud laughter came from the ruined forest. Under Shanks's divine repellent, Lin En actually looked very good, he only suffered some minor injuries. The way you dealt with divine repellent just now is very similar to that of a friend of mine. Shanks looked at Lin En who emerged from the ruins and said to him. Just when divine repellent was about to hit Lin En's body, Lin En's body was actually torn into pieces. Divine repellent passed through Lin En's body, and Lin En's body recovered again. If not, even with the armament hockey that Lin En mastered, he would not be able to resist the fate of being torn into pieces. Shanks had seen such scenes countless times before, he would not be wrong, Lin En's attack must have a lot to do with his old friend. In fact, I learned this fruit development ability from your friend not long ago. Lin En smiled at Shanks. So, my observation hockey sensed that he appeared outside the windmill village before, it seems that it was not my illusion. Shanks' face showed a hint of strangeness, he did not expect that he would hear such a thing from Lin En. Of course it's not your illusion. He was the one who sent me to the sea outside Windmill Village. It's just that he still hates you and doesn't want to meet you. When mentioning Buggy, Lin En remembered Buggy's gnashing face when they parted. What, there are people in the East China Sea who care so much about Shanks. How come I don't know? Jesus Boo's face showed confusion. He was the first crew member recruited by Shanks, and Jesus Bu has been with Shanks since then. If there is such a reclusive person in the East China Sea, he can't be unaware of it. I don't know either. Ben Beckman didn't know that Shanks had such a past. The other companions didn't speak, they just looked at Shanks quietly. Shanks knew that it was a bit unreasonable for him not to reveal some key information. That was a long time ago. He and I were both members of Roger's Pirates. After he and I witnessed the execution of our Captain Roger, he invited him to go out to sea with me, but he refused me. We haven't met since then. Shanks looked at the sea in the distance, and there was a trace of reminiscence in his eyes. The crew of the Red Hair Pirates did not listen to all these words, they just extracted a few key words. Crew of Pirate King Roger. Witnessed the execution of Pirate King Roger in Rogue Town. The first crew member invited by Shanks, he also refused Shanks' invitation. Any exposure of these things can make his reputation resound throughout the sea, but they still don't know who Shanks is talking about. There is such a terrible person hiding in the East China Sea. He must have a place in the future pirate emperor of the New World. Ben Beckman looked serious, he was full of respect for Shanks, a friend he had never met. Willing to lurk in the weakest East China Sea for more than ten years, such a patient enemy must have big ambitions. The other red hair pirates nodded in agreement. Hey, 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 aren't we watching the duel between Brother Lin and Shanks? Who won? Jesus B.U. found that their topic was getting more and more off topic, and he once again drew everyone's attention back to the duel itself. Although it seemed that Lin was blown away by the god's bane just now, everyone in the red hair pirates who saw the power of the god's bane felt horrified. Such a powerful force is enough to compete with the pirate emperors who reign over the new world. They will become the new pirate emperor pirates. Such a powerful blow did not kill Lin. If this matter gets out, Lin's reputation will definitely resound throughout the sea. I lost. The power of the god of void is very strong. My swordsmanship has no power to fight back against the god of void. But next time we meet, I believe I will use my swordsmanship to break your god of void. There was no sign of failure on Lin En's face. His face was full of longing for the future. The god of void did not kill you. You did not lose this battle. Shanks said to Lin En. He was speaking from the heart. Lin En was not as old as him, and he had not practiced domineering for as long as he did. It would be unfair if the two were put on the same starting line. Shanks remembered that when he was Lin En's age, although he had experienced many battles on the ship of Roger's pirate group, 
he still could not compare with Lin En in terms of strength. If you lose, you lose. There will never be so much fairness waiting for you on the sea. Lin En shook his head. He was not the kind of person who could not afford to lose. He already knew how strong the top combat power of the sea was. He already knew the direction of efforts. Well said, for today's sword duel, let's have a banquet. Since I came to the East China Sea, I haven't met a swordsman-like brother Lin En who is worth fighting for a long time. Shanks put his arm around Lin En's shoulders and was about to drink with Lin En. Although Lin En's strength is not strong, Shanks feels that today's battle is very enjoyable. We are out of wine. Have you forgotten, Shanks, the last bottle of wine was smashed on your head by the bandit named Sig. Lucky Lu said to Shanks while chewing a big meatball with bones in his hand. When Shanks mentioned this matter, he immediately became embarrassed. I actually drank all the wine. It seems that I have to go to sea as soon as possible. It's okay to have no money, but it's not okay to have no wine. Shanks straightened the straw hat on his head and said to the red hair pirates. After saying this, the momentum of the originally scattered red hair pirates suddenly became extremely terrifying. Although they were still the same few people, each of them seemed to have changed. This is the true face of the terrifying red hair pirates. Baby Five was shocked to see the instantaneous change of the red hair pirates. She also understood that the terrifying red hair pirates were not exaggerated, but accumulated through battle after battle. Hey, where is Luffy? Lin suddenly found that Luffy, who was standing behind Jesus B.U., had disappeared. He went back to Machino's tavern. He said he went back to drink juice. Jesus B.U. replied. After hearing Jesus Boo's words, Shanks immediately realized that something was wrong. Compared to Juice, the battle between Lin and Shanks was much more tempting than Juice. The battle between Lin and Shanks was not over yet, so how could Luffy go back to drink Juice? He went to find the bandit Sig. Shanks' face was serious, and he realized this problem at this time. Although Baby Five's firepower coverage was very strong, ordinary people could not escape the bombing at all. But after all, Sig is a big bandit with a bounty of 8 million berries. What if he is not dead? With Luffy's strength, he can't be Sig's opponent. Luffy is in danger, Shanks and Lin said at the same time. Lin En knew that Luffy was in danger, not because Lin En's domineering power could predict the future. Lin En just had better eyesight, and he saw the kidnapped Luffy. Luffy. The other members of the Red Hair Pirates also saw Luffy, and they shouted at the boat that was floating from the river on the mountain to the sea. Shanks. On the boat, Luffy's short arms and legs were constantly struggling. Pirates, you want to kill me like this, but I, Sig, can't die so easily. The man who kidnapped Luffy spoke. At this time, his whole body was as black as charcoal. With such serious injuries, ordinary people would have died long ago, but Sig was still alive. If he hadn't spoken, no one would have connected him with the pirates who had caused trouble in the tavern before. In just half a day, Sig's life trajectory changed drastically. He was a bandit king with hundreds of followers before, but after returning from the tavern, all his followers died, and he himself became a seriously injured and dying loser. Kid, all this is caused by you. I will make you die today, and die in front of those pirates. Sig whispered to Luffy, his voice was very cold. Even Luffy, whose nerves had become rubber, felt a burst of hair stand on end. I will be fine, Shanks will definitely save me. You attacked Shanks before, and you haven't apologized to him yet. Luffy kept struggling in Sig's hands, and he was still thinking about this matter. When Sig's attention was still on Luffy, he didn't realize that he had been aimed at by Jesus B.U. with a gun. Even though the distance here is far, with Jesus Boo's shooting skills, he can definitely kill Sig without hurting Luffy. But Luffy is a person with special abilities. If he falls into the sea, he will be drowned by the sea water. Jesus Bu has been looking for an opportunity. Finally, when Sig lifted Luffy's collar high, Jesus Boo's gun fired. A lead bullet appeared in the center of Sig's forehead, and a hole as big as a wine glass had been blown out of his entire back of the head. Sig's behavior offended the anger of the Red Hair Pirates. Before he came to the beach to talk to the Red Hair Pirates, he was shot dead remotely. Sig's body fell softly on the boat, and Luffy also fell on Sig's body. Luffy did not fall into the sea, and Luffy was saved. I survived. 
Luffy looked at his intact body and he couldn't help but breathe a sigh of relief. Luffy, run. Before Luffy could recover, Shank's voice suddenly came from the shore. What happened? Luffy hadn't figured out what happened yet, but when he saw the purple shadow on the bottom of the sea, he knew what it was. That was the king of the sea. He was almost eaten by this guy when he was competing with Yuta in rowing here before. Luffy wanted to escape, but he found that there was no oar on the boat. The next moment, the seawater behind Luffy surged violently, and a pair of blood-red eyes appeared. The king of the sea appeared. Is this the king of the sea? Lin An looked at the huge king of the sea with blue fins like an electric eel, and he didn't feel the slightest threat. This is a sea king that is only a few points larger than a sea beast. Everyone here has the power to kill the king of the sea in seconds. It's blood, the blood attracted the king of the sea. Jesus B. You already understood everything. Just now he shot and killed Sig, and it was Sig's blood that fished out the king of the sea. Before the body of the king of the sea was completely exposed, a bloody mouth in the sea tore Sig and the boat in half. Luffy was also thrown into the sea. Help, Luffy kept floundering in the water. He was a capable person, but he had become a landlubber, and he could not swim at all. Seeing this, Jesus raised his gun again, ready to shoot the king of the sea who had dived into the sea. At such a close distance, Jesus was sure to shoot the king of the sea to death. But his gun was caught by Beckman. Let Shanks handle this matter. Beckman saw Shanks who had already rushed out, and he said to Jesus. Jesus shot and killed Sig just now, and that was with Shanks' consent. Now that Shanks wants to save Luffy himself, it means that he does not need Jesus to intervene. With Shanks' strength, he can use the Conqueror's hockey to stun the King of the Sea in one go. BABY5, follow and see. Lin signaled BABY5 to transform into Mark Armor, and Lin flew directly to the top of Shanks' head. Before, Lin felt that Shanks' broken arm was very suspicious, this time he wanted to see with his own eyes what was going on. The bloody mouth of the King of the Sea suddenly swallowed Luffy who fell into the sea. At the critical moment, Shanks suddenly appeared and rescued Luffy. Although Luffy survived, Shanks' left arm and the meat between his ribs were torn off. That's it. Lin thought there would be some hidden secrets, but he didn't expect Shanks really did nothing for acting. Lin had experienced Shanks's divine avoidance before. With Shanks' strength, he could kill the king of the sea on the shore. Even if he didn't use divine avoidance, his domineering aura was enough to shock the king of the sea. Shanks, your acting is too poor. Quote, Lin gave Shanks a negative score for this performance in his heart. After the king of the sea swallowed one of Shanks' arms, he wanted to continue attacking, but Shanks just looked at the king of the sea coldly. Under the shock of the conqueror's hockey, fear appeared in the king of the sea's tyrannical eyes, and then it dived into the sea again. Shanks, your arm. Luffy hugged Shanks tightly, and he cried very sadly. It's just an arm. You are a man, and it's not worth being sad about it. Shanks touched Luffy's head with his only remaining hand and comforted him. Shanks, if you can take your arm out of the king of the sea's stomach, I can still connect your arm. Lin said to Shanks, is it really possible? Then I will go to the king of the sea now. Quote. When Roaring Gabu heard what Lin En said, he jumped into the sea and chased in the direction where the sea king fled. His speed was much faster than the sea king who was swimming just now. In less than three minutes, the sea surface was dyed red with blood. Roaring Gabu took Shanks' arm back. Shanks' arm was slightly corroded. Lin En put Shanks' arm back in place, and Hongo, the ship's doctor of the Red Hair Pirates, bandaged and applied medicine to Shanks skillfully. Shanks, you can easily kill the king of the sea in seconds, why do you want to give up your arm? What on earth is in Luffy that is worth such a huge price? While treating Shanks, Lin En asked Shanks. I see a new era in Luffy. You may not believe it, but Luffy's smile is exactly the same as my previous captain, and he also ate the rubber fruit. Maybe this is the choice of fate. Shanks told Lin En. The secret of the rubber fruit may be a secret in this sea, but it is not a secret for Lin En. Shanks thought Lin En didn't understand, but Lin En understood everything he said. As Lin En guessed, Shanks threw away this arm on purpose, not by accident. Your arm has just been connected. Don't make any intense movements with this arm within three days. Lin An looked at Shanks's arm that was entangled like a mummy, and he said to Shanks. 
Now that his purpose of coming to Windmill Village has been fulfilled, it is time for him to leave. It's okay, my sword holding hand is not injured, and there is not much difference between one hand and two hands for me. Shanks said to Lin with a smile. Suddenly, the smile on Shanks' face faded, and his eyes looked at the distant sea. The navy is here, we should leave. Ben Beckman walked in, and he looked at the little black in the distance and said to Shanks and Lin. In order to give an explanation to the attacked celestial dragons, the Red Hair Pirates had long known that Garp had brought ten warships to the East China Sea to encircle and suppress pirates. Now that warships have appeared in Windmill Village, it means that Garp is ready to attack them. This is Garp's hometown, and the residents here are also friends of the Red Hair Pirates. Whether it is the Red Hair Pirates or Garp, they don't want to start a war in Windmill Village. Garp is not a Kainu, and his act of sending warships is telling the Red Hair Pirates that they should leave. The Red Hair Pirates had already prepared to leave. When they saw the Navy warships appear, they clearly divided the work to move supplies to the ship. Lin, the East China Sea will definitely usher in a big cleansing next. Come with us. Our Red Hair Pirates will definitely let you get out of the East China Sea safely. Shanks said to Lin. Lin took his arm. Shanks owed Lin a favor, and he wanted to repay this favor in this way. No, I still have things to do. Lin rejected Shanks's suggestion. Lin never thought of borrowing the power of the Red Hair Pirates to leave the East China Sea. Lin's own power was enough to enter the Grand Line. Shanks, are you leaving? Seeing the Red Hair Pirates sorting out supplies, Luffy already knew that it was time for them to part. We have been here for a year. It's time to leave. Shanks and Luffy stood on the reef by the sea, and Shanks said to Luffy. I won't ask you to take me on board anymore, because I've decided to be a pirate myself. Luffy revealed his latest thoughts to Shanks. Can someone like you be a pirate? Shanks laughed. I can. One day, I will find a group of partners who are not inferior to you guys, find the world's number one treasure, and become the pirate king. Even in the face of so many masters of the Red Hair Pirates, the young Luffy did not show his fear, he shouted out his wish loudly. Do you want to surpass us? Then I'll leave this straw hat with you. It's my most important hat, you must keep it well. When you think your pirate group can compete with the Red Hair Pirates, you can return this straw hat to me. Shanks took off the straw hat on his head and put it on Luffy's head. Luffy didn't say anything but under the cover of the straw hat, he was already in tears. Here we go, this is the origin of straw hat Luffy. Lin witnessed another famous scene. Let's go to, B-A-B-Y-5. Lin said to B-A-B-Y-5. Lin, wait, I will surpass you too. Seeing that Lin had already ridden on the yacht that Baby 5 had transformed into, Luffy shouted at Lin. Shank's goal was too far away. Lin was only a few years older than him, but Lin looked stronger than Ace. I'm waiting for that day, Luffy. Lin waved at Luffy, who was wearing a straw hat on the shore, and he followed the Red Hair Pirates' ship tow sailing outside the Windmill Village. As soon as the Red Hair Pirates' ship left the Windmill Village, the Navy's warships launched an attack on the Red Hair Pirates. Boom, boom, boom. The warship instantly fired dozens of shells. These Navy ships were the elite of the headquarters, and their shells were much more accurate than Smoker's Navy ships. With just one salvo, the Red Hair Pirates' Red Force was already drowned by the Navy's artillery fire. Lin, was their ship sunk? Baby Five saw this scene and asked in surprise. That's the Red Hair Pirates, how could they be defeated so easily? Lin was driving Baby Five and gradually approaching the direction of the Red Hair Pirates. In the water mist that was shooting all over the sky, the Red Force emerged from the artillery fire. As Lin expected, the Red Hair Pirates shot away all the falling shells. A man with blonde hair shot away most of the shells that fell on them in the air. Even if there were occasional shells approaching, the Red Hair Pirates could blow them up one by one. Since the Navy took the initiative to attack us, let's fight back. Jesus, sink that Navy ship. Shanks looked at the Navy ship that kept firing shells, and said to Jesus. We should have done this a long time ago. Jesus raised his gun and aimed at the Navy ship, and then the bullet covered with domineering hit the Navy ship directly. Boom. In just a moment, the Navy ship exploded. Jesus obviously shot bullets, but his bullets had more terrifying power than shells. Can sniping be done to this extent? Baby 5 was greatly enlightened today. 
As a weapon fruit ability user, Baby 5 has always used the weapon fruit to transform into various weapons to solve battles. Baby 5 doesn't know how to use Jesus Boo's hockey to cause extreme destructive power yet. Watching Jesus Boo's shooting skills, Baby 5 felt like she had opened the door to a new world. This is the true combat power of the Red Hair Pirates, Lin N said to BABY5. The Navy ship was destroyed by the Red Hair Pirates, and Lin and Baby 5 left Windmill Village without firing a single shot. The Red Hair Pirates headed straight for the Grand Line, and Lin and Baby 5 headed for Shimotsuki Village. Baby 5 has already contacted Jerma, and Reiju will also drive the ship that Jerma built specifically for Lin to Shimotsuki Village. Lin now has three crew members, and it may be time to go to the Grand Line. Shanks, brother Lin is not with us. Seeing Lin's yacht heading in another direction, Jesus said to Red Hair Shanks. It's okay. I have a feeling that we will meet again in the new world. Such a man, even the navy hero Garp can't keep him. Shanks looked at the yacht that had turned into a small black dot, and a smile appeared at the corner of his mouth. Lin is a very scary opponent. Although he is still young now, in five years at most, Lin can become the top powerhouse on this sea. Unexpectedly, he would meet such an interesting man as Lin En before leaving East China Sea. Shanks still had one regret in East China Sea. He had asked Lin En for help, hoping that Lin En's surgery fruit could solve this trouble. There will definitely be an ambush by the Navy at the Upside Down Mountain. We need to face at least five elite Navy Vice Admirals. Vice Captain Ben Beckman looked at the Upside Down Mountain, whose outline could already be seen, and analyzed to the crew. We have been silent in the Grand Line for a year, and it is time to announce the return of our Red Hair Pirates. This time our target is the pirate emperors of the new world, and we also want to become such a pirate group. Shanks looked at his crew and said to them, Those pirate emperors are not only monsters in their captains, but also monsters with bounties close to one billion baileys. Shanks now has the strength to rival the pirate emperor, and his crew are also such monsters. Although they have not yet entered the new world, they are confident that they will become the new pirate emperor pirates. When the crew of the Red Hair Pirates heard Shanks' words, they all shouted excitedly. The Red Hair Pirates' ship soon arrived at the Upside Down Mountain, and they saw nine Navy warships lined up in a row. In front of those Navy warships, you can still see broken wood chips, which are all pirates who were preparing to escape from the Grand Line but were defeated by the Navy. Here they come, the Red Hair Pirates. When Smoker saw the pirate ship, his eyes narrowed. The previous battle with Lin En left him seriously injured, and now he still has bandages on his body. But he didn't want to miss this battle. Every pirate in the Red Hair Pirates is a monster. If they are allowed to enter the Grand Line, countless residents of the Grand Line will probably be displaced. Rogue Town is his defense zone, and he has to do his part. Everyone get ready, the Red Hair Pirates have appeared. Looking at the skull with scratches on its face on the skull flag, all the navy began to prepare for battle. Red Hair, you stayed in Windmill Village for a year. What did you do to Windmill Village? After the Red Hair pirate's ship appeared, Garp's roar resounded through the sea. Windmill Village is his hometown, and he will never allow anyone to destroy it. We are just taking a short break in Windmill Village. Although Shank's words sounded indifferent, his voice was no less than Garp's. Restoration. Impel down is your destination, so go to Impel down to rest. After Garp finished speaking, he picked up the piles of shells around him and kept throwing them at the Red Hair Pirates. In less than a second, hundreds of shells appeared around the Red Hair Pirates. The accuracy of the shells thrown by Garp was much more accurate than the shells fired by the Navy warships, and these shells fell towards the Red Hair Pirates one after another. One man has the firepower of ten warships, he is worthy of being Vice Admiral Garp. The Red Hair Pirates are quite strong, but unfortunately they met Vice Admiral Garp. Yes, Vice Admiral Garp is the man who stopped the Pirate King Roger. Can the Red Hair Pirates compare with Vice Admiral Garp? The Navy looked at Garp with respect, and they discussed quietly. Garp is almost the idol of all ordinary Marines. In their eyes, it is not surprising that Garp has any strength. Use this level of attack right at the beginning. A gleam of light flashed in Shank's eyes, and the griffin on his waist was unsheathed instantly. A dazzling slash passed by, and gorgeous smoke exploded around the red hair pirate's ship, Flower. 
hundreds of shells thrown by Garp were swept away by Shank's sword. When the Navy saw this scene, their cheers stopped abruptly. The Red Hair Pirates are the Red Hair Pirates. No wonder Vice Admiral Garp used all the Navy's forces to deal with this ship. Show some strength, let me see how strong you are, Shanks. Garp said, and he threw out a huge iron ball that was as big as a warship. Just looking at the size of this iron ball, you can tell that it weighs much more than a warship. I'm afraid Garp can even use such a terrifying weapon. Where did Vice Admiral Garp hide such a big iron ball? Why didn't I see it just now? Smoker looked at the huge shadow that almost covered the entire warship, his eyes were full of astonishment. Shouldn't you pay attention to the power of Vice Admiral Garp's attack? Why is your focus so strange? No wonder you have become a problem Navy. Garp's adjutant Bogart looked at Smoker beside him in surprise, and he complained to Smoker. Pay close attention to the battle between Vice Admiral Garp and Shanks, you will learn a lot from it, Smoker. Vice Admiral Gummier looked at the young Smoker beside him, and smiled at Smoker. Smoker is very young, and he is a natural ability user. He is the future of the Navy. This is why Vice Admiral Garp allowed him to participate in this operation. It is very important for Smoker's growth to witness such a level of battle. Almost when Garp's iron ball was about to touch the mast of the Red Hair Pirate's hull, a series of incandescent twisted cracks appeared on the iron ball. There was no shocking sound, and Garp's big iron ball broke into pieces and fell into the sea. Boom boom boom. The iron ball's terrifying weight smashed into the sea, and waves as high as mountains suddenly appeared on the sea. As expected of an opponent who can fight Mahog, your swordsmanship is very strong, Shanks. Garp looked at the red hair pirates sailing out of the stormy waves, and he laughed. After all, Shanks is also a big pirate with a bounty of over one billion. Garp doesn't think that the previous attack can defeat Shanks. Vice Admiral Garp, if your strength is only this, then we will enter the Grand Line. At the bow of the red hair pirates, Shanks looked at Garp and said to him loudly. You are stronger than I thought. You are worthy of being a crew member of the Pirate King Roger's ship. But I can force Roger's pirates into a desperate situation, let alone the current red hair pirates. Garp is no stranger to Shanks. When Shanks was still a trainee in Roger's pirate group, Garp led the Navy to force Pirate King Roger into a desperate situation several times. Garp has met Shanks when he was a child more than once, and he didn't expect that the kid back then could grow up to the present level. Vice Admiral Garp, how can you think that my crew members are not as good as the former members of Roger's pirate group? These people were selected by me personally, and they are all monsters. Listening to Garp's words, Shanks said tit for tat. Really, let me see if you are qualified to enter the Grand Line. Fist Bone Impact Garp's fist was full of domineering, and his punch actually caused shock waves in the air. What a strong force, this punch can easily destroy our ship. Jesus aimed his gun at Garp, his face full of sternness. Iron Fist Garp's name was earned through hard work. His fist may be harder than Seastone. Ben Beckman had the same expression on his face. Although Garp was only a vice admiral in terms of military rank, his strength was no less than those pirate emperors. Garp was the first hurdle that the Red Hair Pirates had to overcome. If they couldn't even get past Garp, what qualifications did they have to compete for the hegemony of the pirate emperor? Facing Garp's attack, Shanks raised his sword high. God Bane, Shanks's domineering aura was wrapped around his sword. Facing Garp's terrifying attack, he also released God Bane. You actually learned Roger's God Bane. Garp's pupils shrank a little when he saw the familiar scene. Divine evasion is the unique skill of Pirate King Roger. After Pirate King Roger died, Garp thought that divine evasion had been cut off, but Shanks actually learned this attack. In a trance, Shanks, who released Divine Evasion, overlapped with Roger. The attacks of the two of them collided with each other, and the entire sea suddenly set off a violent storm, and the formations of those naval warships were immediately blown to the east and west. Retract the sails, retract the sails quickly, otherwise we will be blown over by the storm. It's too late, cut the ropes of the sails quickly. The navy faced the storm and they began to get busy. At this time, one after another, the Navy Vice Admirals appeared in front of the warships, with their arms open, and they used their armed color domineering to withstand the shock waves of Shanks and Garp. The first wave of impact had just ended, and the storm with a hundred-meter high wave attacked the Navy again. 
Their strength was too terrible, and the aftermath of the battle alone had the destructive power comparable to that of a natural disaster. Clang! Garp's fist had already collided with Shank's sword, and many weak navy officers had their eardrums bleeding from the sound. Are you injured? With your strength, how could anyone in the East China Sea hurt you? Garp only noticed Shank's tied left arm at this time. With Shank's strength, there were not many people in the New World who could cause him such an injury, let alone in the East China Sea. But Shanks was indeed injured, and his injury was not light, and judging from his injury, it seemed that he had only recently been injured. It was just an accidental injury. Shanks glanced at his arm and said nonchalantly. Shanks is injured, which is good news for our Navy. When the Vice Admirals saw this scene, they were shocked at first, and then delighted. Go! Capture those guys from the Red Hair Pirates. Gumal took the lead in stepping on the moon steps towards the Red Hair Pirates, and the other Navy officers followed suit. Gummier, Dalmesia, John Jando, these are all famous Vice Admirals of the Navy. The Red Hair Pirates looked at the Vice Admirals rushing towards them, and they recognized the identities of those Vice Admirals. Smoker, take the ordinary Marines away, this is not a battle they can participate in. Garp saw that the warships were also rushing straight towards the Red Hair Pirates, so he shouted to Smoker on the deck. It's too late, Vice Admiral Garp. Shank's eyes were sharp, and his domineering aura was released towards those Navy officers. Boom. Suddenly, a Navy officer beside Smoker fell down with white eyes and foam at the mouth. Hey, what's wrong with you? Shanks asked the fallen Navy officer. Before he could make any move, another Navy officer fell down beside him. His eyes were white and he was foaming at the mouth. It looked exactly like the previous Navy. Boom, boom, boom. The surrounding Navy fell one after another, and soon the Navy warship became extremely quiet. Domineering hockey, such a strong domineering hockey. I'm afraid that the domineering hockey of that guy Whitebeard is no more than this. Garp was shocked to see that the clouds in the sky were actually dispersed by Shanks's domineering hockey. He hadn't encountered such domineering hockey for a long time. You already have the qualifications to become the Pirate Emperor. If you can escape from my hands and enter the Grand Line, the New World will definitely have one more Pirate Emperor. Garp has realized the horror of Shanks, and he rarely takes it seriously. We are stronger than the Navy, you can't stop our Vice Admiral Garp. Shanks didn't care about Garp's threat at all. This was the confidence brought to him by his strength. Repel these vice admirals, and we will head for the Grand Line. Beckman picked up a double barreled shotgun, and the bullets he fired instantly penetrated a Navy ship that passed by them. Other members also took action, and each of them resisted a vice admiral. This time, the Navy attached great importance to the Celestial Dragons. In addition to the Navy hero Garp, they also sent nine vice admirals. But now Garp was blocked by Shanks, and the other vice admirals were blocked by the Red Hair Pirates, and they could not board the ship of the Red Hair Pirates. The speed of the rushing sea current was very fast, and they almost passed by the vice admirals of the Navy at the moment of fighting with them. When Shanks saw this scene, he directly released a slash to stop the pursuit of the vice admirals of the Navy. After that, he also stepped on the moon step back to the ship of the Red Hair Pirates. Vice Admiral Garp, See you in the new world. Red Hair waved to Garp, and the ship of the Red Hair Pirates followed the rushing sea current into the upside down mountain. Should we chase? A vice admiral asked Garp. No, let Sengoku worry about it. Isn't there another pirate named Lin in the East China Sea? Capture him first. Garp said to the vice admirals. Garp told the Navy headquarters about his escape into the Grand Line with the Red Hair Pirates, and then he asked five vice admirals to stay at the inverted pass. Other warships and vice admirals began to sweep the pirates and evil forces in the East China Sea. Garp went straight to Windmill Village. The Red Hair Pirates have been stationed in the East China Sea, and Garp wanted to see if they had done anything to Windmill Village. Everything seemed normal, but when he saw Luffy, Garp immediately felt something was wrong. Luffy had a straw hat on his head, and Garp thought it was the straw hat Roger had worn. Garp had been chasing Roger for so many years, it was impossible for him to make a mistake. Didn't Roger pass this straw hat to Shanks? Why is it on Luffy's head now? Old man, I want to be a pirate. This was the second critical hit Luffy gave Garp. Luffy, do you know what you are saying? Garp angrily twisted Luffy's head with his two fists. 
He originally wanted to teach Luffy a lesson, but he didn't expect Luffy's head to be flattened by him in an instant. Not only that, Garp's fist felt that Luffy's face also had a rubbery texture. Luffy, have you become a devil fruit user? Garp grabbed Luffy's face hard, and Luffy's face was stretched very long. Let go, stinky old man. Luffy finally escaped from Garp's clutches, and he explained the whole story to Garp. You mean, you accidentally opened a box next to Shanks, and you ate a patterned fruit? Garp frowned when he heard Luffy's words. This was the third bad news Luffy gave him, he became a power user. Yeah, that fruit is terrible, it's the worst fruit I've ever eaten. Luffy complained, is it the fruit that Shanks snatched from CP9? Garp suddenly linked the two things together. Last year, the five elders gave a strange order. They asked CP9 to secretly transport a superhuman devil fruit to Marihoa. And this time, they asked the strongest and most talented fuzzy foe to deliver it personally. But they were robbed by the red hair pirates, and the fruit disappeared. Because of this, fuzzy foe was directly captured and impelled down. Out of intuition, Garp felt that Luffy had eaten this fruit. And this was the purpose of Shanks coming here, he just wanted Luffy to eat this fruit. Is this a coincidence or a destiny? But the rubber fruit is an ordinary devil fruit, why does the world government attach so much importance to this fruit? For a time, Garp felt too many mysteries. It's a pity that he is not the wise general Sengoku, and the detailed analysis of such a detailed conspiracy is not what people like him are good at. Garp didn't care about him so much. If there was any mastermind behind the scenes, he would just beat him to death with his iron fists. Luffy was his grandson. Whoever plotted against him would die. In addition to this incident, Garp actually heard the name of Lin from Luffy. You said Lin had a swordsmanship contest with Shanks, and he actually survived under Shanks' divine protection. Garp frowned, and he found that he had heard an incredible rumor. Yes, not only that, he also connected Shanks' broken arm. He is really amazing. I will become such a powerful pirate in the future. Luffy said loudly to Garp. It turns out that Shanks' arm is broken. No wonder his arm has a bandage. Garp's eyes showed a hint of realization, and he remembered the scene of fighting with Shanks before. Shanks has been fighting Garp with one hand. It turns out that his arm is broken. Lin En is really capable of reattaching the broken limb. Wait, what in the East China Sea can break Shanks' arm? Garp noticed this blind spot. I was attacked by a bandit named Sig, and then the king of the sea appeared, and I fell into the sea. In order to save me, Shanks' arm was swallowed by the king of the sea. Luffy added, what a joke, can the king of the sea hurt Shanks? Garp felt that he had heard a big joke. The king of the sea is the nickname given to the small sea king by the residents of Windmill Village. This small fish can be killed by any marine who has mastered the armament hockey. Luffy said that it actually bit off Shanks' arm, how did it do it? For a moment, Garp felt that Shanks was acting for Luffy. What kind of characteristics does Luffy have that can make Shanks make such a big sacrifice for Luffy? Sacrifice. And that Lin, he has now received Shanks's divine repellent. Garp has fought with Shanks, and he knows the power of divine repellent. Lin can have such an amazing performance at such a young age, he is no less than those pirate emperors. If Lin is allowed to enter the Grand Line, Lin's achievements will not be lower than Shanks. Immediately, Garp used Den Den Mushi to tell the headquarters everything that happened here. Lin has only been getting the Operation Fruit for a year, and his strength has changed so much. We can't let him grow anymore. Regard Lin as the first wanted target, and we must capture him and impel down. Sengoku said to Garp, I have asked the Navy of the East China Sea to look for Lin's trace. When I find Lin's trace, I will personally take action. After Garp finished speaking, he hung up the Den Den Mushi. Isn't the Operation Fruit a fruit that can only be developed with medical skills? How can Lin En make himself so strong through the Operation Fruit? After hanging up the Den Den Mushi, Zhang Guo rubbed his head with a headache. Maybe it wasn't Lin En who chose the Operation Fruit, but the Operation Fruit that chose Lin En. Vice Admiral Suru said at this time. When on Minyan Island, Vice Admiral Suru heard Rasanandi describe the whole process of seizing the Operation Fruit. Obviously he had taken the Operation Fruit away, as long as he gave it to Law, Law could save himself. But the Operation Fruit fell to Lin En's feet halfway and was eaten by Lin En. 
This seems to be accidental, but if you look at it from another perspective, isn't this the inevitability of fate? It is precisely because Lin En is extremely compatible with the Operation Fruit that he can develop the Operation Fruit to such a terrible extent within a year. It's a pity that Lin En is not our Navy. If he is the Navy, how many Navy with broken limbs will regain their combat effectiveness? Zhang Guo couldn't help but regret. He can't join our Navy. Even if he joins our Navy, the world government will definitely come to ask for him. That fruit can be used to perform longevity surgery on people. There will always be people in the world government and the celestial dragons who will be tempted. Lieutenant General Suru saw this very clearly. Lin En didn't know that he had done nothing to the Navy, but his threat to the Navy was actually rising sharply. Now Lin En was no longer riding BABY-5. He and Baby-5 appeared on a steel ship. This ship was specially built by Germa in half a year according to Lin En's requirements. In addition to this ship, Judge also equipped Lin En with 20 armored clones to be responsible for the maintenance and use of this ship. Like the revolutionary army's visit to Shimotsuki village at night, under the cover of the night, Lin En's steel ship also slowly came to the beach. On the beach, Huina, wearing a white t-shirt and brown shorts, had been waiting here for a long time. When she saw the ship, she boarded the ship without hesitation. Are you the third crew member recruited by Lin En? My name is Vince Mokreju, and I am the ship doctor of this pirate group. When Kuina boarded the ship, she heard Reju's voice. Reju, aren't you good at using poison? When did you become a doctor? Baby 5 was surprised when she heard Reju's voice. B-A-B-Y-5, haven't you heard the saying that medicine and poison are inseparable? I have been studying medical knowledge hard for the past six months, and now I am also a qualified doctor. Reju said to B-A-B-Y-5. Hello, my name is Perona, and I am a swordsman. Kuina nodded to Reju. Baby-5 and Lin and Kuina both knew each other, but only Reju in front of them didn't know each other. Now there are swordsmen, snipers, firepower, and ship doctors on this ship. If there is another navigator, the basic framework of a pirate group will be complete. Lin En said that he wanted to set up a pirate group by himself, but he didn't expect that Lin En had already recruited three crew members. Kuina, you actually brought out the Wado Aikimanji. Lin En walked out of the cabin. He saw the white long sword on Kuina's waist, and a hint of surprise flashed in his eyes. Wado Aikimanji is Koshiro's most cherished sword. I didn't expect Kuina to bring this sword out. I also mastered the Zantai. My father said that I am qualified to take this sword out to sea. It's just because I want to go out to sea as a pirate, so my father let me fake my death and held a funeral for me, so that if anything happens to me in the future, it won't affect Shimotsuki village. Kuina raised the Wado Aikimanji in her hand and showed off to Lin En. You actually have mastered the Zantai. Congratulations, Kuina, you are officially a swordsman. Lin En smiled at Kuina. Kuina is only 11 years old, and she has already mastered the skills of Zantai. In the future, maybe she can really defeat Hawkeye and become the strongest swordsman in the world. Mr. Koshiro is really cautious. He actually wants to use this method to evade the responsibility of Shimotsuki Village. Hearing Kuina's words, Baby Five couldn't help but curl her lips. Although it's a fake death, Kuina, your friends must be very sad, right? Reju asked Kuina, except for a certain green algae-headed idiot, I'm afraid no one will remember me in less than a month. Kuina thought carefully, and Zoro's figure appeared in her mind. Okay, now that Kuina is on board, let's prepare to go to the Grand Line. Lin En said, and he signaled for Jerma's clone to drive the boat. Lin En stood at the stern, waving his hands goodbye to the darkness. Strange, did Lin En find me? Koshiro walked out from behind the tree, looking at Lin En waving his hands, Koshiro smiled, and he also waved in the direction of the ship. Lin En is a very magical person. Koshiro was relieved that Kuina followed him. When the ship completely left Shimotsuki village, Lin En also returned to the cabin. Looking at his three crew members, he held the first meeting. Lin En has been in the pirate world for a year. Although he now has several subordinates, this is the first time he has truly formed his own pirate group. Everyone, our pirate group is just starting out. Let's give this pirate group a name. Lin En looked at his three crew members and said to them. Lin En is the user of the Operation Fruit. 
Why don't we call our pirate group the Operation Pirate Group? Reju thought for a moment and said first. No, if we call it this name, people who don't know it will think it's the Dr. Pirate Group. Kuina thought about it and felt that this name was inappropriate. Why not just call it the Lin N Pirate Group? The pirate group I was in before was directly named the Doflamingo Pirate Group after the young master. Baby Five saw that Kuina didn't have any good names, so she suggested a name. Then let's call our pirate group the Lin Pirates. Lin looked at Baby Five and Reju, and he decided on the name of the pirate group directly. Most of the names of the pirate groups on this sea are based on the nicknames or characteristics of the captains. For example, the Whitebeard Pirates, that's because Captain Whitebeard has a very recognizable crescent-shaped white beard. The Red Hair Pirates, their Captain Shanks has red hair. The Beasts Pirates, their Captain Kaido's nickname is Beasts. Lin doesn't have any nicknames now, so he named his pirate group after himself. Compared to Reju's name, Baby Five's name is obviously more recognizable. In addition to the name of the pirate group, they also designed the flag of the Lin Pirates. It's a heart pierced by two crossed swords. Just from the flag, it is unclear whether it is a pierced heart or a heart operation. Soon, the flag was drawn on the sail by the armored soldiers of Jerma. We are about to enter the Grand Line. Should I call you Captain Lin now? On the big ship, Reju, wearing a pink combat uniform, looked at the pirate flag pattern on the sail. She smiled at Lin in front of her. After just a few months of not seeing each other, Reju has grown from a little lowly to a 1.73 meter tall long-legged girl. Compared to the title of Captain Lin, I still like to call Lin by his name directly. Baby Five said to Reju. Although Reju has grown a lot, she is still a little short compared to the 1.9 meter BABY5. There is no need to call me Captain. You can just call me Lin. Lin said to them. Report, we found the trace of the pirate Lin N. While Lin En was still talking to the three women, a Navy officer saw them all on a deserted island. In order to find the trace of Lin En, all the Navy officers of the East China Sea Navy branch were dispatched. Under such close surveillance, the trace of Lin En was finally discovered by the Navy officers. Chapter 51 Lin, it seems that a Navy ship is catching up with us. Lin and his group had just left Shimotsuki village for half an hour when Baby Five discovered that a Navy ship had been hanging behind them. Has the Navy noticed it? Lin picked up the telescope and looked at the dark shadow in the distance. The light at night was not good, and from the outline of the dark shadow, it seemed to be a Navy ship. The Navy must be following them late at night to perform a mission, and I'm afraid they are that mission. They have been targeted by the Navy. I originally wanted to leave the East China Sea in a low-key manner, but since the Navy doesn't want us to keep a low profile, then we won't keep a low profile. Lin asked the armored soldiers who were operating the large ship to slow down, and when he saw clearly that it was indeed a Navy ship, he ordered Baby 5. B-A-B-Y-5, destroy that ship. Baby 5 has destroyed many ships in the North Sea, and B-A-B-Y-5 is already very skilled in this business. I know, Captain Lin. Weapon Transformation. Armstrong Cyclotron Jet Armstrong Cannon. Baby Five's waist sank slightly, and then a cannon with an indescribable appearance appeared in front of Reju and Kuina. Captain Lin, is this cannon a real cannon? Reju looked at the wretched appearance of the cannon in front of her, and asked Lin with a slightly red face. Of course it's a real cannon. Lin's face was also a little embarrassed. He taught Baby Five to transform this cannon when he was bored in the North Sea. Because it is very powerful, and even if there is a pirate ship that cannot be completely destroyed because of its large size, the burning flames can burn the pirate ship to ashes. Baby Five has liked to use this cannon to destroy other ships since then. Lin hasn't fought a naval battle for a long time, and he actually forgot about it. This cannon looks very powerful, why is it not serious? Kuina looked at the cannon that Baby Five transformed into with clear eyes, and she asked Reju with some curiosity. Since Reju asked that, she must have seen something. But no matter how Kuina looked at it, she didn't see anything. Kuina, you are quite knowledgeable. This cannon is very powerful, let me show you. After Baby Five finished speaking, her body shrugged violently. Boom, accompanied by a thunderous sound the navy warship on the opposite side suddenly turned into a big fireball. 
The scattered wooden boards burned with flames like fireworks scattered on the sea. In the dark night, this scene actually had a different kind of beauty. A navy warship was destroyed with one shot. I have never seen such a powerful cannon. Seeing the torch that almost illuminated the sea, Reju was so surprised that her mouth couldn't close. Even the rockets on the armor cannot reach such a powerful cannon. Germa is a technological powerhouse on this sea, but Germa does not have such a powerful cannon. Reju, how powerful is this Armstrong Cyclotron Jet Armstrong Cannon? The huge cannon slowly turned around, and Baby Five asked Reju. Although the name of this cannon is difficult to pronounce, it is the most powerful cannon I have ever seen. Reju looked at the strange cannon transformed by Baby Five with a complicated expression. She no longer thought this cannon was wretched. Your devil fruit is so powerful, it seems I have to work harder. Kuina recalled the attack of Baby Five just now, and she felt a little palpitated. If Baby Five shot her like that, she would most likely be shot away by BABY5. At this moment, the complacency of mastering the iron cutting technique also disappeared in Kuina's heart. Although the woman named Reju did not attack, Kuina learned from her casual conversation with Baby Five that Reju was born a cyborg. Since her physique is not weak, her strength is definitely very strong. Kuina's goal is to become the strongest swordsman on this sea. If she can't even beat her companions, how can she protect them and become the world's strongest swordsman? I have to go to training first. If the navy catches up again, please notify me, BABY5. Kuina said to Baby 5, and she walked towards the trainer. Now that her physical weakness has been eliminated, she can train as hard as she can. I will, Kuina. Hearing that she was needed, Baby 5's face surged with a sense of happiness. Reju, Baby 5, you should take a break too. Now that the Navy's surveillance ship has been dealt with, we may have a big battle in Upside Down Mountain. Lin An looked at the dark sea and said to Reju in BABY 5. The Navy's surveillance ship has appeared, and the Navy's large force will definitely not let them leave the East China Sea safely. Lin En returned to the cabin and dialed Judges Den Den Mushi again. What? The Navy warship was defeated by a single shot from the Lin En pirates. When he learned the news, Garp's face became serious. Before the Navy fought with Lin En, Lin En had already done this to the Navy. The cannons of the Navy's branch fortresses could hardly do this. What kind of terrifying heavy firepower was installed on Lin En's ship? Vice Admiral Garp, let me go and capture Lin En. Vice Admiral Gummier walked out of the Vice Admiral and said to Vice Admiral Garp. As the chief of the G2 branch of the Navy, Vice Admiral Gummier is also very famous in the Navy. Gummier is confident that even if that Lin En is strong, can he be stronger than the Navy Vice Admiral? Don't underestimate Lin En. It is said that Da Flamingo left the North Sea and entered the Grand Line because of Lin En. According to Lin En's sailing route, he must be going to the Grand Line. We just need to wait for him to arrive at the Upside Down Mountain. There is no need to do things like dividing troops. Garp stuffed a donut into his mouth and swallowed it. He said to Gummier. This time the Navy has an absolute advantage, whether it is military strength or high-end combat power. No matter how strong Lin En is, he can't be as strong as the Navy here. Garp has already grasped Lin En. He only needs to wait for the arrival of the Lin En pirates and then capture them to the Impel Down City. Lin En is a suspected felon who attacked the Celestial Dragons, Saint Charmico. Only by catching him can we give an explanation to the Five Elders. Garp looked at the Vice Admirals and said to them in a deep voice. Lin En was the first to use the armor, and according to intelligence, Germa's armor was also based on Lin En's armor. The Red Hair Pirates have already fought Garp head on and escaped. Only by catching Lin En can we give an explanation to the Celestial Dragon's attack. Vice Admiral Garp, is Lin En really a felon who attacked the Celestial Dragons? John Garndo had a puzzled look on his face. He felt that Lin En was not the one who attacked the Celestial Dragons. The truth is not important. You just need to remember that Lin En is a pirate. Catching pirates is the mission of our Navy. Beside John Garndo, a Vice Admiral smoking a cigar said to him. As Lin En expected, after defeating the Navy warship, the Navy did not continue to send Navy ships to follow Lin En. When the sun jumped out of the sea again, Lin En found that their ship was heading towards the Upside Down Mountain at a speed three times faster than before. 
At this time, in front of the upside-down mountain, the Navy warships were in a straight line and completely blocked the entire entrance. There was a Navy Vice Admiral standing at the front of each deck of the nine Navy warships. When the ship of the Lin N Pirates appeared, those Navy Vice Admirals had already locked the Lin N Pirates with their breath. Obviously, these Navy ships were coming for them. There are so many Navy Vice Admirals. This force has exceeded the power of two Demon Slayer orders. The Navy really values us. Reju looked at the terrifying combat power of the Navy in front of her with a solemn face. She felt a mountain of pressure. Five Navy Vice Admirals plus five warships can easily crush any country on this sea. Now surrounded by so many Navy forces in this small estuary, can they really rush through? It's hard to imagine how the Red Hair Pirates managed to break out of such a terrifying siege. Kuina's tone was a little amazed. The Red Hair Pirates are pirates with bounties of over 100 million. Their captain, Red Hair Shanks, has a bounty of over 1 billion baileys. They are real big pirates. Reju said to Kuina, although Kuina didn't know what a pirate with a bounty of over 100 million meant, she knew it must be very powerful when she heard the bounty of 1 billion. Baby 5 transformed again into the Armstrong Cyclotron Jet Armstrong Cannon, and she was ready for battle. Lin, you have no chance to enter the Grand Line, just surrender. A Vice Admiral shouted to Lin. For these Vice Admirals, arresting a pirate with a bounty of less than 100 million was an insult to their strength. If it weren't for the attack on the Celestial Dragons, not to mention these Vice Admirals, Lin En wouldn't have been qualified to see the Commodore. According to intelligence, there were only three underage girls on Lin En's ship besides him. Such a pirate group was just playing house in their eyes. Navy, you can't catch me. After Lin En finished speaking, he signaled BABY-5, which had transformed into the Armstrong Cyclotron Jet Armstrong Cannon, to fire. Boom, flames appeared on the muzzle of Baby-5, and a cannonball flew straight towards a Navy warship that had been aimed at for a long time. Is this the cannon that blew up the Navy warship with one shot? Gumir's face showed a solemn expression, and he swung a slash straight towards the cannonball. This cannonball was very fast in the eyes of ordinary people, but Gumir had already predicted the attack trajectory of this cannonball with his observation hockey. This slash directly hit the shell, and a huge ball of fire suddenly appeared between the Navy warship and Lin En. Is this the strength of the Vice Admiral who can actually shoot down the shell? Kuina's hand tightly grasped the Wado Aikimanji in her hand. She could see that the Vice Admiral just now used the legendary slash. This cannon is very powerful. If the Navy is equipped with this cannon, then our Navy's combat effectiveness will be increased by more than 10 times. Garp looked at the light ball that exploded on the sea, and his eyes lit up. I didn't expect that in addition to the armor, Lin En actually had such a powerful cannon in his hand. Lin En, you are a suspect in attacking the Celestial Dragons, and I will not let you escape. Garp rushed towards the sky with the moon step, his right fist raised high, and he was ready to smash it down on Lin En's ship. Vice Admiral Garp, don't talk nonsense. It was your son who attacked the Celestial Dragons. What does it have to do with me? Lin En used the power of the Operation Fruit to strangely appear in front of Garp. Before Garp's fist fell, Lin En instantly swung dozens of knives at Garp. What, was it actually done by Dragon? Garp didn't expect that the Revolutionary Army was involved in this matter, and his movements could not help but stagnate. Now Lin En's sword was one step faster than him, and Garp's fist could only hit Lin En's bone sword first. Obviously Garp only swung a punch, but Lin En felt that it was not Garp's fist that was swung, but the Red Earth Continent that hit him. Crack, Lin En's long sword with the armament hockey attached was actually broken by Garp. Seeing Garp's fist coming again, Lin En used the ability of teleportation again to return to the ship from high altitude. Lin En, is what you just said true? Did the Revolutionary Army really attack the Celestial Dragons? Garp's face was very bad. Until he heard the news about his son from Lin En. Whether it is true or not, Vice Admiral Garp, you have already made a judgment, why ask me again? Lin En said to Garp. Garp knew that what Lin En said was true because according to the intelligence of the Navy, the Revolutionary Army had appeared in the Kingdom of Goa. The Revolutionary Army rescued all the people trapped in the uncertainty terminal by the fire set by the Kingdom of Goa. From the time point of view, 
the time when the high-level officials of the Revolutionary Army were active in the East China Sea coincided with the time when the Celestial Dragons were attacked. And with the means of the Revolutionary Army, they are indeed very likely to obtain the armor technology of Germa, or directly purchase the finished armor from Germa. Vice Admiral Garp, the real culprit who attacked the Celestial Dragons has been known, why don't you go and catch them? Maybe the Revolutionary Army is still in the East China Sea. Lin En smiled at Garp. Pirate, stop quibbling, you must be related to the attack on the Celestial Dragons. A vice admiral with scars on his face shouted at Lin En. When the other vice admirals heard that the murderer was the Revolutionary Army, their faces did not change at all. The Navy did not give Lin En another chance to speak, and their cannons fired at Lin En's ship. I understand, the Navy has long known who the murderer is. After all, in the East China Sea and the first half of the Grand Line, only the Revolutionary Army dared to attack the Celestial Dragons. But you can't catch the Revolutionary Army. In order to give an explanation to the Celestial Dragons and the world government, I am the scapegoat. Although the sound of the artillery fire was loud, Lin En's voice could still be heard clearly. Pirate, no matter what you say, you can't escape the fate of entering the Impel Down. The vice admirals roared, and they suppressed Lin En's voice. The battle officially started at this moment. Facing the sky full of shells, Baby Five directly turned into a close in defense gun. Da da da, a sound that makes people feel scalp numb sounded, and Baby Five instantly detonated all the shells fired in the air. Baby Five relied not on accuracy, but on absolute firepower. The close in defense gun fired nearly 200 bullets per second. In addition to detonating those shells, the Navy warship closest to the Lin En pirates was actually cut diagonally by Baby Five's terrifying firepower. Baby Five's attack was so fast that even the vice admirals didn't react. What kind of gun is this? It's so powerful. The Navy that was cut in half jumped into the sea. They looked at the Baby Five that was still spitting out flames, and they were all shocked. Compared with the machine guns of Baby Five now, the machine guns on the sea are slower than the oldest flintlock rifles. Dare to destroy the Navy warship. The vice admiral on the warship felt deeply humiliated. Baby Five's attack just now was too fierce, and even his body was hit more than a dozen times in an instant. He had armed color domineering, and Baby Five's attack did not cause any damage to him. But the Navy warship did not have armed color domineering, and Baby Five's bullets actually had the effect of chopping the ship with a sword. They lost a Navy warship at the beginning of the war, which made the Navy feel very angry. They could accept that a Navy ship was destroyed by the Red Hair Pirates, but those Vice Admirals could not accept that a Navy ship was destroyed by four kids from the Lynn Pirates whose average age was less than 16. In an instant, a series of sharp slashes came towards the ship of the Lynn Pirates. Room Baton. Lynn teleported their ship forward 50 meters, and all the attacks of the Vice Admirals were in vain. Not only can people teleport, but also ships can teleport. Garp saw this scene and was surprised. Obviously, Lin's strength was not strong, but his development of this surgery fruit was beyond Garp's expectations. Before Garp was surprised, ten armored soldiers flew up from the ship. Garp was not unfamiliar with these armored soldiers. The Navy headquarters already had more than a dozen such armored soldiers, and there were already Commodores who were familiar with them. Ka ka ka. The rocket launchers on the shoulders of the armored soldiers were launched, and 120 rockets fell around in various trajectories. At the same time, the chests of these armored soldiers lit up, and the chests of these armored soldiers were full of energy cannons. Swish, swish, swish. Energy cannons were released towards the Navy warships, and the vice admirals of the Navy did not care to attack Kuina and others anymore. They hurried to resist the falling shells. These armored soldiers were too close to the Navy warships, and the surrounding area almost turned into a sea of fire in an instant. Lin An, I didn't expect you to be able to do this. I can't let you continue. Looking at the sea of fire in front of him, Garp took a deep breath, and his fist smashed directly towards the Lin An pirates. Fist Bone Impact Garp's fist wind actually blew out the sea of fire, and this punch rushed towards Lin An with flames. Lin An took a deep breath, and he was ready to try Garp's attack. Lin En's whole body was covered with armament hockey. Facing Garp's punch, he swung out a slash with the sword in his hand instantly. 
Under the heavy pressure of Garp's fist, Lin En finally understood the slash. Garp's blow was too strong, and Lin En's slash was instantly shattered. Facing the shock wave of Garp's punch, Lin En appeared at Garp's side again. Garp's observation hockey had anticipated this long ago. Almost at the moment when Lin En appeared, his fist seemed to have appeared here. Lin En's bone sword was hanging upside down. When Garp's fist was about to hit his chest, he actually cut himself in half from the chest. What is this operation? Garp was stunned by Lin En's move, but Garp's fist was not slow at all. No matter what tricks Lin En used, Garp could break it with one punch. Unfortunately, Garp's punch that was determined to win missed. It's not that Garp didn't aim, it's that Lin cut his body open. Garp's fist went straight through Lin's empty chest. Garp didn't expect Lin to hollow out his chest to deal with his fist. His fist went through Lin's body, but Lin didn't get hurt at all. Garp is a physical master. Although Lin dodged Garp's fist, Garp's fist went through his chest now, and Lin was still in a very dangerous situation. But when Garp was about to tear Lin's body apart, Garp found that there was a very hard periosteum in Lin's body, and Garp couldn't tear Lin's body apart. The next moment, spikes appeared all over Lin's body, and Garp's pupils shrank instantly. Ding ding ding. The bone spurs with armed color domineering attached to Garp's body burst into crisp sounds. Garp also covered his body with armed color domineering, and Lin's attack could not break Garp's defense. Defense. What a pity. If I could break through Garp's defense, I could make him lose control of his limbs and endocrine system. Lin En secretly felt pity in his heart, and then he used adrenaline to adjust his body functions to the highest level. Lin En's attack speed increased by 30% instantly compared to before, and his fists and the bone spurs on his body were so fast that afterimages appeared. Even so, Lin En's attack could not do anything to Garp. In the end, Lin En took Garp's punch and his body flew back to his ship. Lin En and Garp fought very quickly, and the whole process did not exceed one minute. It was in this minute that five of the ten Germa armored soldiers had exploded. Lin En, you have no way to retreat. Garp looked at Lin En, and he persuaded Lin En to surrender again. Lin En has a good talent, but it's a pity that he has grown up too quickly. The other vice admirals also looked at Lin En coldly, and they had already eaten Lin En. The red hair pirates have already fled so the Lin En pirates will have to take the blame. The world government needs an explanation, and the celestial dragons also need an explanation, and Lin En is that explanation. Are you sure you can defeat me? Lin En looked at the vice admirals who surrounded him in a semicircle, and he actually laughed. Reju, Kuina, and Baby Five also gathered behind Lin En. In the previous battle, Reju used poison to poison all the attacking navy. Looking at the navy soldiers falling in groups, the vice admirals thought that Reju had also awakened the conqueror's hockey. Although Kuina's clothes were slightly damaged, her body did not have any obvious injuries. Baby Five had more combat experience than them, but there was also a deep sword mark on the mark armor she transformed into, which was the masterpiece of a certain vice admiral. It was too intense for them to experience such a hellish battle as soon as they went out to sea. I have seen your strength. Do you have any means of escape? Garp didn't know what means he had to turn the situation around given Lin's current situation. You will see it soon. It's not that I have no way to escape, it's that you are surrounded by me. Lin raised his arms high and clenched his fists towards the sky. Garp suddenly looked up at the sky. At this moment, Garp and the vice admirals, faces changed. Before Garp and the vice admirals Lin could be caught, a rain of rockets began to fall from the sky. Rockets with thick smoke whizzed towards the navy warships. There were so many rockets falling from the sky that the vice admirals felt their scalps tingling. Is this armor? How many armors are there? Gummier waved his swords repeatedly, and slashed the rockets in the sky one after another. There were so many and so dense rockets that even the aftermath of the explosion shook the navy warships. How is this possible? Where did Lin find so many armors? Another vice admiral was shocked. One armor can be equipped with 12 rockets, and the wave of rockets in front of them has tens of thousands of rockets. In other words, there are a thousand armors above them at this time. Except for the lack of domineering power, the destructive power of those armors is no less than that of the Commodores. In other words, more than a thousand Commodores open fire on them at the same time. 
This is the power that can overthrow Mary Joa, and now it actually appears here. Vice Admiral Garp, now you should make a choice, do you want to continue to capture me, or do you want to save these navy? Looking at those flustered Vice Admirals, Lin En asked Garp. I choose both. Garp's upper body muscles bulged suddenly, and he punched the sky. Under this punch, the rockets in the sky exploded one after another, and Garp used his iron fist to forcibly blast away the rockets falling from the armor. The clouds in the sky were dispersed, and the silver armor appeared in front of the navy. Facing Garp's attack, thousands of armors fired energy cannons from their chests to continuously offset Garp's punch. In the end, Garp's attack did not hurt those armors, and even the lineup of those armors was not messed up. While Garp cleared the rockets in the sky, Dalmesia stepped on the moon step and rushed towards the armored groups. Only by dealing with these armors can the navy survive. If these armors continue to attack, even the vice admiral will be killed after exhausting his physical strength. Rockets with white smoke approached Dalmesia, and Dalmesia was bombed and could not be approached at all. There is no sign, but this is the standard armor sold by Germa on the sea. John Gando said to Garp. Lin, these are Germa's armors. Garp asked Lin. Only Germa has the ability to manufacture so many armors on this sea. Garp doesn't believe it if it's not Germa. If he is not mistaken, the one with pink hair and wearing pink memory battle armor on Lin's ship is the princess of the Germa kingdom Vince Mokreju. Just now, all the navy warships were shrouded in the attack of those rockets, but there was not even a rocket around Lin's ship. Lin was able to get Germa to mobilize so many armors. It seems that Lin and Germa have an extraordinary relationship. Guess, Lin did not tell Garp the answer. Since Garp asked this question, he must have guessed it. But what does it matter? Germa is no longer afraid of the world government. Even if the world government wants to destroy Germa, they will have to pay a considerable price. Vice Admiral Garp, only your iron fist can withstand so many rockets. Now you have two choices. Do you want to sacrifice these navy to catch me, or do you want to save these navy and let me go? Lin raised this question again. Garp had tried it just now. With his ability, he could not destroy all the armors before the navy was wiped out. Didn't I say that I want both? No matter what your relationship with Germa is, as long as I can take you down, everything will be over. Garp clenched his fists, and he wanted to prove his attitude with his iron fists. Vice Admiral Garp, I am stronger than you now, you are not qualified to choose. If you want both, you will get nothing. As Lin En said, hundreds of armors flew around Lin En's pirate ship and fired rockets at the surrounding navy. A new chaos began here. Garp had just jumped from his warship when a fierce explosion broke out under his warship. The ship was blown up. Be careful of the bottom of the ship, there are armors on the seabed. Garp's adjutant Bogart released a slash at the bottom of the sea, and he shouted to the surrounding vice admirals. These armors can actually dive. The faces of the vice admirals became even uglier. Just defending against the attacks in the sky was already a bit stretched for them, and now they had to defend against the seabed, how could they possibly defend against it? Boom, boom, two more navy ships were sunk. Garp didn't care. He just punched an armored person. But immediately several armored people holding chainsaws rushed towards Garp. Swish, swish, swish. The dense rockets and the explosion of armored people submerged this place. Garp finally rushed out of the smoke, but Lin had already used the power of the surgery fruit to teleport his ship to 200 meters away. Lin didn't give Garp a chance to get close. Garp has fought on the sea for so many years, and he has never fought such a frustrating battle. The navy can actually be suppressed by firepower, and it is suppressed by hundreds of times the firepower. Listening to the screams of those navy on the sea, even if Garp wants to catch Lin again, he can only save those navy first. As Lin En said, if Garp was determined to capture Lin En, then before Lin En was captured, except for the vice admiral, the rest of the navy soldiers would probably die. Garp is not Sakaski, he will not give up the lives of so many navy soldiers to complete the mission. Those navy soldiers could only watch Lin En's ship follow the sea current to the inverted mountain pass. The navy had no time to protect themselves, let alone capture Lin En. BABY5, this is fire coverage, have you learned it? On the ship of the Lin En pirates, Lin En pointed at the navy soldiers covered by rockets and said to BABY5. 
Baby Five looked at this spectacular scene and nodded her head. The swordsmanship of the vice admirals is so strong, maybe I still have a long way to go to challenge the world's strongest swordsman. Kuina held the hilt of the sword in her hand, and her heart was filled with endless fighting spirit. Lin, you knew we would be sniped by Garp, so you asked Jerma to mobilize so many armors to come here in advance, right? Reiju looked at the nearly two-kilometer explosion zone behind her and asked Lin. Lin looked at the inverted mountain pass in front of him and smiled without saying a word. This is Lin's first time entering the Grand Line. From now on, the name of Lin's pirates will resound throughout the Grand Line. The sky full of rockets and fierce explosions became the fireworks to bid farewell to Lin En as he entered the Grand Line. When the ship of the Lin En pirates completely disappeared in the East China Sea, flames appeared from the backs of the armors and flew away. Two vice admirals tried to catch up with the armors with the moon step. They wanted to know who was attacking the navy. But the armors flew too high and too fast, and the two vice admirals did not catch up. Has Germa mastered such power? If Germa has tens of thousands of armors, they may have surpassed the giants of Elbaf and become the strongest country in the world. Looking at the armored group that had disappeared, Garp retracted his gaze. The Navy's action this time became a complete joke because of Lin En. After the bombardment of the armors just now, only two Navy warships were still floating on the water. Garp's warship was not seriously damaged, but the other ship was just barely floating on the sea. This is when Lin En hasn't grown up yet. In two or three years, I'm afraid Lin En will cause greater damage to the Navy. What are you still standing there for? Save people. Garp looked at the Navy who were still in shock and shouted to them. The Navy woke up from their dream and jumped into the sea to save people. The bombing just now was the most intensive and powerful they had ever seen. Now these Navy were still a little confused. Five of the ten Navy Vice Admirals were seriously injured and fell into the sea. They had to rescue the Navy Vice Admirals. The Navy Vice Admirals are the backbone of maintaining justice in the sea. No one expected that dealing with a pirate who had just set out to sea would cause so many Navy Vice Admirals to be seriously injured. We found Vice Admiral Yuri Gross. He's dead, and his body is stiff now. I found half of Vice Admiral Mark's head. Where are the rest of his body parts? I salvaged Vice Admiral Duke's arm. The Navy fished out the body parts of the Vice Admirals one by one in the sea. The vice admirals were the strongest, and they also suffered concentrated fire from the armored vehicles. Vice Admiral Garp, the preliminary estimate of the losses has come out. Almost all of our warships were destroyed in this battle. Five of our vice admirals died in the battle, two were seriously injured, and the navy lost 10,000 people and countless others were seriously injured. Gumal walked in front of Garp and reported to Garp. Even the Roger pirates didn't cause such a big damage to the navy. Lin, this kid. Garp clenched his fists angrily. Today's battle was the worst defeat in his 40-year career. Vice Admiral Garp, you should bandage your wounds too. Bogard walked out of the deck and handed some bandages to Garp. Garp's condition was not very good now. There were several holes in his navy uniform, and even three or four places on his body were bleeding. Vice Admiral Garp, the navy headquarters. Seeing Garp refused to bandage, Gumal spoke with some difficulty. The death of so many vice admirals at once was a major event in the navy. Even if he went to war with those pirate emperors, it would not cause such a large number of casualties. Faced with such a tragic defeat, Gumal didn't know how to report to the navy headquarters. Let me report to the headquarters in person. Garp took a deep breath and took Gumal's den den mushi. At the navy headquarters, Sengoku was still working. Although Sengoku was still the rank of admiral, he had begun to familiarize himself with the work of the navy marshal in advance. Among the admirals of the target, Zephyr Blackarm had lost his fighting spirit, and he used all his enthusiasm to train the new recruits of the navy. And Garp doesn't even serve as an admiral, let alone a marshal. Garp previously reported that the Red Hair Pirates broke through his blockade and entered the Grand Line from the East China Sea. Now the Red Hair Pirates have arrived at the Sabayati Archipelago. When they enter the New World, perhaps a new pirate emperor will be born in the New World. In addition, the great pirate Doflamingo is preparing to auction the golden gold fruit in the Sabayati Archipelago. Sengoku knows that Doflamingo will not sell this fruit. He just wants to use this fruit to make the Don Quixote family famous. 
After being driven out of the North Sea by Germa, Doflamingo is ready to lay out in the New World. After Rosinant was rescued from Mignon Island by Crane, he also told the Navy headquarters about this information. But Rosinant didn't know Doflamingo's more detailed plan. Since Roger opened the Age of Discovery with his own death, Sengoku feels that the sea is only beginning to run wild now. As a sea that is about to become the man of the army marshal, Sengoku was thinking about how to end the great pirate era. Brew brew, brew brew. The Den Den Mushi in front of his desk suddenly rang. Through the avatar on the Den Den Mushi, Sengoku recognized that it was a call from Garb. Garb, have you caught Lin? As soon as the Den Den Mushi was picked up, Sengoku asked Garb. Garp's strength is no less than Sengoku's. Garp's fleet this time can already compete with the Pirate Emperor. Because the Red Hair Pirates have the combat power of the Pirate Emperor, Garp did not leave them behind. But letting Garp deal with Lin, who has not yet grown up, Sengoku doesn't think there will be any accidents. Sengoku, I want to report to you about the battle with Lin's pirates this time. After hearing Sengoku's question, Garp was silent for three seconds, and he finally spoke with difficulty. You should escort Lin and to impel downtown first. It won't be too late to discuss the details when you return to the headquarters from impel downtown. Zhang Guo laughed, but he didn't hear Garp's response, and his brows slightly frowned. No way, didn't you stop and beat Lin and to death? Zhang Guo asked again, but Garp on the Den Den Mushi side remained silent. This battle was Garp's biggest stain. Although he had prepared himself mentally, Garp still felt very entangled when he really had to report. Garp, what happened? Zhang Guo's tone also calmed down, and he felt as if something unexpected had happened. Zhang Guo, I didn't catch Lin En, and Lin En escaped to the Grand Line. Not only did we not catch Lin En, but we lost five vice admirals this time, and tens of thousands of navy officers died. Garp simply reported the results of the battle to Zhang Guo. Garp, are you sure you're not kidding me? When Sengoku heard what Garp said, his pupils suddenly shrank, and even his face showed a look of shock. Sengoku knew Garp very well, and he would never joke about such things. What happened? Tell me the whole story in detail. Sengoku quickly calmed himself down and asked Garp about the details of the battle. Garp slowly narrated the battle process to Sengoku. Lin En's strength exceeds that of ordinary pirates on this sea, especially his Operation Fruit. If you are not careful, you will be in big trouble. Moreover, Lin En's fruit ability allows him or objects to teleport, which makes Lin En very difficult to kill. Listening to Garp's narration, Sengoku also got a general understanding of Lin En. Lin En has a strong physique, and he has developed the Operation Fruit to a point that even Garp was astonished. Now Lin En has mastered the armament hockey and observation hockey, and has considerable attainments in swordsmanship. In terms of combat power, Lin En's combat power is now comparable to that of an ordinary vice admiral. At Lin En's age, the combat power he showed is a monster. Even Sengoku did not have such strength at Lin En's age, and perhaps only those few pirate emperors could compare with Lin En. Such strength is considered a monster among pirates, but it is nothing to garp. Garp's iron fist was honed by smashing mountains. How could the devil fruit developed by Lin in one year be compared with Garp's efforts in half a lifetime? What Sengoku didn't expect was that Lin actually mobilized thousands of armored vehicles to bomb the navy warships. Those armored vehicles directly launched firepower coverage on the warships below at high altitudes. The navy warships had no anti-aircraft weapons at all, and they could only passively take the beating. It was also to protect the warships that Lin was able to escape from Garp's hands. Those dead Navy Vice Admirals rushed into the armored group to protect the Navy warships and were killed by the powerful firepower. And most of those Navy warships were sunk by armored vehicles from the bottom of the sea. On this sea, the only armed force with so many armored vehicles is the Germa Kingdom. It seems that Judge attaches great importance to Lin. He actually dispatched so many armored vehicles to help Lin. After listening to Garp's report, Sengoku also realized that these armored vehicles were from the Germa Kingdom. Although we all know that those armors belong to the Germa Kingdom, there is no Germa logo on them, so the world government cannot convict Germa. Moreover, with Germa's current strength, does the world government dare to break up with Germa? Garp held the Den Den Mushi, and at this moment he suddenly remembered Lin's mocking expression. 
It was the Revolutionary Army that attacked the Celestial Dragons, but the Navy couldn't catch the Revolutionary Army, so they wanted to use Lin to pay for the crime. Now Lin has directly asked Jerma to take action, and the Navy also knows that the murderer is Jerma. Do they dare to take action against Jerma now? Now, in addition to not having top combat power, the power of the middle and high-level Jerma may be stronger than that of the Pirate Emperor. If the world government dares to take action against Jerma, Jerma will dare to seek cooperation with the Revolutionary Army or the Pirate Emperor. At that time, the threat of Jerma may increase tenfold or even a hundredfold. Jerma has grown up, and this is no longer a kingdom that the world government can control at will. This matter involves the member states. I will report this matter to Marshal Kong, and he will report it to the world government. Sengoku cannot handle this matter, let the world government worry about it. Garp, you should take good care of your injuries first. After Sengoku instructed Garp, he hung up the Den Den Mushi. Lin An, it seems that another pirate star is about to appear. Sengoku looked at the sea outside Marinford, and he had a premonition that this sea was about to usher in turmoil. Sengoku, our navy has never experienced such a tragic defeat. This matter must be blocked from the news. This is a shame for our navy. If the people know this news, the prestige of our navy will be greatly reduced. Vice Admiral Suru was listening in. After Sengoku and Garp ended the call, she said to Sengoku. Garp had already issued a gag order to all navy when he talked to us. Sengoku said to Vice Admiral Suru. Although Garp seems to be a bit nervous, he never fails to make decisions on key issues. No matter what method Lin En uses to cause heavy losses to our navy, he can do it, that's his ability. Now Lin En's threat is more than just 90 million baileys. Should we readjust his bounty? Vice Admiral Suru made another suggestion at this time. Lin En has caused such a great loss to the navy. He is too threatening to the sea. A mere 90 million baileys can no longer keep up with his threat. Let's set Lin En's bounty at 1 billion baileys. Zhang Guo thought about it, and he said to Vice Admiral Suru, suggested. 1 billion berries, Lin's bounty is close to that of red-haired shanks. Vice Admiral Suru was also shocked by the bounty set by Sengoku. She didn't expect that the always stable Sengoku would set such a high bounty for Lin. From 90 million to 1 billion berries, Lin's bounty has skyrocketed more than 10 times. Suru, do you think Lin's threat is smaller than Shanks? Not to mention Lin's rapid growth rate, just saying that he has the armor of Jerma that can subvert the world, his threat is much greater than Shanks. Sengoku analyzed it to Vice Admiral Suru. The bounty set by the Navy for a pirate is not only based on the pirate's strength, but also on his threat to the world. Vice Admiral Suru had to admit that Lin is indeed a big threat now. This reminded her of her first meeting with Lin on Minyan Island. At that time, Vice Admiral Suru learned that Lin had defeated Pika just after eating the Operation Fruit, and Vice Admiral Suru felt that Lin was not an ordinary person. It has only been a year, and Lin has even defeated Garb. Are you going to let a powerful pirate like Doflamingo take the initiative to deal with Lin? Vice Admiral Suru also figured out Sengoku's intention. Shank's strength was earned in the New World. Lin has such a terrifying bounty without even going to the Grand Line. How could those pirates obey him? Those pirates in the Grand Line will definitely make trouble for Lin. As long as they can defeat Lin, this pirate group will immediately become famous. There are also those bounty hunters. There are very few pirates with bounties over 100 million in the first half of the Grand Line. If they can kill Lin, they will not have to worry about food and drink for three lifetimes. This is the first time that a pirate with such a high bounty has appeared in the first half of the Grand Line. Vice Admiral Suru can predict that once this news is released tomorrow, the first half of the Grand Line will usher in an unprecedented runaway. The facts turned out to be just as Vice Admiral Suru and Sengoku had expected. When the World Economic News published the news in the newspaper, everyone who saw the newspaper became nervous. Shanks, Lin's bounty is about to catch up with you. Sabayadi Archipelago, Island No. 13, in Shaki's Blackmail Bar. Yesub said to Shanks with a beaming face while holding today's newspaper. Strange, didn't Lin just enter the Grand Line? What did he do in the East China Sea that his bounty has increased to such an outrageous level? Lacky Lu still had his elbow out of his mouth, and he said vaguely while chewing his elbow. 
If Lin did something to increase his bounty to such an outrageous level, there is only one possibility, he defeated the navy that blocked the East China Sea's upside-down pass. Ben Beckman made such a guess with a cigarette in his mouth. How could Lin defeat that navy? It was led by the hero Vice Admiral Garp, and there were nine Vice Admirals and tens of thousands of soldiers from the Navy headquarters. Don't mention Lin, we can only pass as quickly as possible, let alone talk about defeating it. Jesus felt that Ben Beckman's guess was exaggerated. If Garp hadn't been defeated, even if Lin had killed all the Navy branches of the East China Sea, his bounty would not have changed so exaggeratedly. Ben Beckman still insisted on his point of view. If Ben Beckman's guess is true, then Lin has done a great thing this time. Shanks' eyes lit up, and he was looking forward to meeting Lin next time. Shanks, is he the one who connected your broken arm? Beside Shanks, an old man with silver hair and a scar on his left eye pointed at the photo of Lin in the newspaper and asked Shanks. This old man is the vice captain of the Roger Pirates where Shanks used to be, Hilba's Rayleigh, who is known as the Pluto. Yes, that's him. Shanks smiled at Rayleigh. Two extraordinary figures appeared in the East China Sea. One is Lin, who has one billion baileys before entering the Grand Line. And Luffy, who made you risk your arm and even entrusted Roger's straw hat to him. Rayleigh's eyes showed a trace of emotion, which made him think of the man in the straw hat again. Lin has entered the Grand Line, and you will see him soon. As for Luffy, you may not see him until ten years later. Shanks recalled the boy who smiled like Captain Roger, and he was looking forward to the scene ten years later. On another island in the Shanks archipelago, Da Flamingo also saw today's newspaper. Hey, 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 this kid Lin N is growing up so fast, he actually has a bounty of one billion baileys. In a dark secret room, Da Flamingo looked at Lin N's bounty order, and the veins on his brows popped up. He didn't kill Lin N on Mignon Island, that was the most wrong decision he had ever made. Because Lin N ate the surgery fruit, Da Flamingo didn't attack Lin N in order to let Lin N perform the immortal surgery on him. I didn't expect that in just one year, Lin N has grown to this point. Now even Baby Five's bounty is higher than mine. I only have 99 million baileys, and Baby Five's bounty is 100 million baileys. Pika said to Da Flamingo while holding another bounty order. Baby Five was just a trainee cadre of Da Flamingo's pirate group, but she was kidnapped by Lin An on Mignon Island. In just one year, Baby Five not only grew up physically, but her bounty was also higher than that of Pika, the supreme officer. What kind of magic did Lin An have that could make Baby Five change so much? Da Flamingo was already in a bad mood, and his eyelids twitched when he heard Pika mention Baby Five. If it weren't for the sunglasses covering his eyes, I'm afraid those family officers would have seen his angry look. Da Flamingo spent a lot of money to cultivate two trainee officers, BABY-5 and Buffalo. As a result, Baby-5 was abducted by Lin N inexplicably, and even Da Flamingo couldn't call her back. If it was an ordinary pirate, Da Flamingo would have killed him long ago and let Baby-5 return to the family, but he couldn't kill Lin N. But Da Flamingo was not in a hurry. Once he used the gold gold fruit to make the Da Flamingo pirates famous, he could implement that plan. When he becomes one of the seven warlords of the sea, wouldn't it be easy to take over a mere Lin N? Thinking of this, Da Flamingo picked up the Den Den Mushi and warned Treble again. The auction of the gold gold fruit is very important, and Da Flamingo will never allow any accidents to happen. The user of the Operation Fruit can also reconnect the broken arm of red-haired Shanks. I don't know if he can. Amazon Lily, Boa Hancock, known as the Pirate Queen, is facing a difficult choice at this time. Boa Hancock is also a monster. She became the Emperor of the Nine Snakes Pirates at the age of 18 last year, and led the Nine Snakes Pirates on her first expedition. She only plundered that one time, and she received a bounty of 80 million baileys, and was recruited by the world government as one of the seven warlords of the sea. Lin N is younger than her, and her experience seems to be more legendary than her. Lin N has a bounty of 1 billion baileys before entering the Grand Line, which has never happened in this sea. Even those pirate emperors did not have such a terrible record when they were young. Boa Hancock does not care how strong Lin N is. She cares about the devil fruit that Lin N ate, the Operation Fruit. It is said that it is a top devil fruit. 
The famous doctor who eats the fruit can cure almost all diseases in the world. Although Boa Hancock is not sick, she has something in her body that makes her feel ashamed because of her experience when she was young. Over the years, Boa Hancock has been carefully hiding it. After seeing Lin An and his deeds, Boa Hancock feels that Lin An can help her. The medical skills on this sea cannot do this, but the Operation Fruit may be able to. Sandarsenia, Marigold, let the Nine Snakes Pirates prepare, we are going to see. Boa Hancock shouted to the outside of the door. We know, sister. Soon, the Nine Snakes Pirates began to get busy. Sister, didn't we just finish the looting? What is our goal this time? Boa Sandarsenia walked into Boa Hancock's palace and asked Boa Hancock for instructions. A pirate with a bounty of one billion has appeared in the Grand Line. As one of the seven warlords of the sea, I have the obligation to cooperate with the world government to eliminate him. Our target this time is Lin. Boa Hancock picked up the bounty order in her hand and said to Boa Sandersonia. In Amazon Lily, Boa Hancock's words are absolute. Upon hearing Boa Hancock's order, the Nine Snakes pirates set out to sea and headed for the island at the front of the Grand Line. One billion bounty, I'm a great pirate. On the ship of the Lin pirates, Lin looked at his bounty order and laughed. When he was in the North Sea, Lin was offered a bounty of 90 million baileys, which almost drove the bounty hunters and pirates in the entire North Sea crazy. Now that Lin has so much bounty, I'm afraid the pirates and bounty hunters in the first half of the Grand Line will be moved. Reju, Kuina, you will have many opportunities to take action now. You don't know how annoying those pirates are. Baby Five has experience in this. She began to tell the two girls about their being hunted by pirates and bounty hunters in the North Sea. Kuina heard the news and her eyes showed joy. With so many opponents to hone her swordsmanship, Kuina believes that her swordsmanship can go further. And Reju had an indifferent expression. When she was young, she killed many people for Jerma as a family weapon. Although she was unwilling to do it, she could not resist Judge's order. It was not until she met Lin An that Lin An helped her to untie Judge's imprisonment and she gained true freedom. If anyone dared to cause trouble for Lin An, she would not mind poisoning those people. Lin An and his companions had already crossed the upside down mountain, but Lin An did not see the whale lab that hit the Red Earth continent with its head. Following the direction of the permanent compass, Lin An's ship was sailing on the Grand Line. The weather on the Grand Line was unpredictable. The clear sky just now was suddenly overcast. In less than five minutes, Lin An felt that the surroundings were as dark as night. Is it going to rain? Reju looked up at the sky. She often traveled to the Grand Line and she knew the Grand Line best. Crack, a flash of lightning struck, and a huge shadow enveloped their ship. What is that? Gwina looked at the huge shadow falling from the sky, and a trace of horror flashed in her eyes. Is that an iceberg? Baby Five reacted the fastest, her arm turned into a machine gun and shot at the falling iceberg. Although the iceberg fragments flew everywhere, her attack did not have much effect in the face of the huge iceberg. Seeing that the iceberg was about to destroy their ship, Lin En conjured a huge bone knife 40 meters long. Room, Lin En opened his domain, and after the iceberg fell into Lin En's operating space, Lin En's bone blade easily split the iceberg in half. Boom, two huge icebergs smashed into the sea, and their ships were violently turbulent. How could an iceberg fall from the sky? It was the first time that Kuina saw such a situation. Anything can fall from the sky of the Grand Line, which is also the origin of the unpredictable weather in the Grand Line. Reju was not surprised by this, she had long been accustomed to such scenes. Be careful, it's coming again. Baby Five looked at the black shadow that appeared again in the sky, and she shouted loudly to everyone. Kuina looked up suddenly, and her hand subconsciously clenched the Wado Aikimanji in her hand. A white light split the iceberg in two, and it was Lin En who made another move. These icebergs do not have armed color domineering, and the trajectory of falling will not change, which is a perfect target for Lin En. Then the third, fourth, and fifth icebergs fell one after another, and their position turned into a piece of icebergs in an instant. Whenever the icebergs fell on the top of the ship, they would be cut by Lin En. Lin En also used these icebergs as targets for practicing swordsmanship, and the amplitude of his sword swinging became smaller and smaller, and more and more accurate. What terrible weather, 
if it weren't for Lin En, I'm afraid I would die in this iceberg rain. Kuina tried to chop the iceberg with Wado Aikimanji, and she found that her iron cutting skills could not split the huge iceberg in two. If Lin En hadn't been here, perhaps she would have been killed by these icebergs. Reju, since there is such a terrible storm ahead, why didn't this soldier sail away from this area in advance? Baby Five looked at their ship still sailing straight, and she asked Reju. She remembered that Reju said that this clone soldier knew navigation skills, and Baby Five doubted the skills of this armored soldier. They are just cloned objects, how advanced do you expect them to be in navigation skills? It's amazing enough to understand the permanent pointer and operate the ship. Reju glanced at the armored soldier who was like a wooden man and didn't say a word, she said to Baby Five and Kuina. It seems that we need to let the reliable one as soon as possible the navigator is on board. Lin En heard Reju's words and thought to himself. If Lin En traveled to ten years later, Nami in the East Sea would be the best choice. But Nami is just a child now, and she hasn't started learning navigation yet. There are two navigators Lin En has chosen. The first one is Nico Robin, the son of the devil who is still in the West Sea. As the only scholar on the island of Scholars O'Hara, although it is not clear that Nico Robin knows navigation. But with Nico Robin's intelligence, she learned navigation by self-study at the age of eight. As a scholar, it is very easy for her to learn navigation. But Nico Robin is now hiding from the navy in the dark world in the West Sea, and no one knows where she is. Another person is Perona in the Devil's Triangle. Perona is the adopted daughter of Gecko Mariah, one of the seven warlords of the sea. Zoro was brought to the Sabayati archipelago by her from Hawkeye's residence. Moreover, Perona is a superhuman spirit spirit fruit user, and her fruit is also at the bug level. Hey, the island in front looks like a cactus. Kuina looked at the island in front and shouted. It turned out to be Whiskey Peak. Quote, Lin En saw this highly recognizable island, and he immediately recognized where it was. This is the first island of the seven routes to the Grand Line, and it is also one of the bases of Baroque Studio. There are many bounty hunters gathered here, and their job is to kill those newcomers who have just entered the Grand Line and have no experience. It turns out that those bounty hunters are actually subordinates of pirates. After listening to Lin En revealing the details of Whiskey Peak, the three women were surprised. It just so happens that we need to find a place to rest after experiencing that iceberg rain, and this place in front of us is just right. Lin En is not afraid of these bounty hunters. Even the Luffy pirates who just went out to sea can deal with these bounty hunters, let alone them. That's the big pirate Lin En with a bounty of one billion baileys. When the Lin En pirates entered Whiskey Peak, the bounty hunters were shocked. These bounty hunters are so weak, far worse than those navy. Looking at the bounty hunters lying on the ground, Kuina curled her lips in disdain. The strongest of these bounty hunters is only a little stronger than Zoro, and the rest are even more vulnerable. They used such delicious food to treat us, it turned out that they wanted me to relax my vigilance. Baby Five was still eating the food made by the bounty hunters, and her tone was very regretful. She hasn't eaten such delicious food for a long time. These bounty hunters use some despicable means, and I don't know if they poisoned them. Reju looked at those who were easily knocked down by Kuina alone, and she said to Lin En with a serious face. Use poison, this kind of means really cannot be ignored. Reju, help them see if they are poisoned. Lin En said to Reju. Reju's ability is to use poison. She is an expert in using poison. She can tell whether they are poisoned or not. Captain Lin, you should start the inspection first. Reju leaned over to Lin, her nose almost bumping with Lin's. Reju, you are too close to Lin. Baby Five saw Reju's action and reminded her. But before Baby Five finished her words, her eyes suddenly widened. Reju's pink lips were already imprinted on Lin's lips. When Kuina saw this scene, her face suddenly turned red. I still have to practice. After Kuina finished speaking, she walked towards the practice room in the ship in a panic. Lin, how do you feel? When Reju and Kuina parted their lips, Baby Five blinked her big eyes and asked Lin. Very soft and moist. This was Lin's evaluation of Reju's kiss just now. I'm asking, Lin En, are you poisoned? Baby Five didn't expect Lin En to give her such an answer, and there was a hint of disbelief in her eyes. Just now I confirmed that Lin En was not poisoned. 
Reju's face was slightly red, and she didn't know why she did that just now. Reju, please help me check it together. Baby Five saw this and asked Reju. No need, what we ate is the same as what Lin N ate, he was not poisoned, and you will not be poisoned either. Reju said to Baby Five. Bulu Bulu, Bulu Bulu. When Lin N got back on his ship, the Den Den Mushi in his arms rang. It was Judge's call. Judge, is there something wrong? After Lin N answered the Den Den Mushi, he asked Judge. Mr. Lin, among those armor users, the one with the number N4544 is the one you were looking for. As Judge on the Den Den Mushi said this, the Den Den Mushi's eyes lit up, and then an image was projected onto the wall in front. It was a girl with long straight black hair and wheat-colored skin. This armor was originally designed by a mafia boss in the West Sea, but it was taken away by this woman a few days after it came to his family. According to our database comparison, there is a 95.8% chance that this girl is the son of the devil, Nico Robin. Judge said to Lin. Lin did not expect that installing a monitoring system on the armor could have such a function. This video is from a week ago. According to our observation, the location of this armor is in Alabasta. Judge said to Lin, Alabasta, Nico Robin actually entered the Grand Line several years in advance. Lin did not expect that because of the popularity of armor, Nico Robin also entered the Grand Line in advance. Did Nicole Robin come here for the historical text of Aaron Astor? Lin immediately guessed the purpose of Nicole Robin's coming here. Nicole Robin is the only surviving scholar in O'Hara. The scholars of O'Hara were erased by the world government because of their research on historical texts, so finding the blank hundred years became Nicole Robin's mission. In this case, let's go to Alabasta. Since we are here, Lin looked at the Whiskey Mountain that had become a smaller point, and he decided to recruit Nicole Robin to his ship first. It is really dangerous to sail on the Grand Line without an excellent navigator. The most important thing is that Lin has already come to this route, and Alabasta is a place that Lin must go to. Anyway, since we are here, it's better to go and take a look. Lin has just been past Whiskey Peak, and he defeated all the bounty hunters in Whiskey Peak. Quote. When the Lin pirates just left Whiskey Peak, the news was known by Crocodile Crocodile. The unlucky duo, Mr. Thirteen and Miss Friday drew the whole story. This time Lin did not take action, but a short-haired female swordsman on Lin's ship took action. All the bounty hunters in Whiskey Peak were not even a match for the female swordsman. According to Crocodile's estimation, apart from him, only Mr. One in Baroque Studio can fight her, right? Crocodile also knew the identities of the remaining two crew members. Baby Five was the trainee cadre who kidnapped Doflamingo pirates when Lin first appeared on Mignon Island. At the beginning, the cadre crocodile sent to Baroque Studio recruited Lin, but unfortunately his cadre was killed by Baby Five along with his ship. Baby Five's bounty is now 100 million, which is higher than Crocodile's bounty before he became a Shichibukai. Another one is Reju, the princess of the Vinsmoke family. Crocodile doesn't know what the world government thinks. The Vinsmoke family members openly joined the pirates, but the world government did not condemn Judge, but they kept silent. There are only four people in the Lin Pirates, and each of these four people is extraordinary. Now Crocodile has no intention of recruiting Lin, Lin is too dangerous and far beyond his control. Boss, if Lin attacks our Baroque studio, let me deal with this swordsman. In front of Da Flamingo, the bald man dressed as a monk said to Crocodile. He is Mr. One, the chief commander of the senior agents of Baroque works of Baroque studio and the strongest killer. Of course, as the swordsman's nemesis, it is not too easy for you to deal with a swordsman. Quote. Hearing his subordinate's words, Crocodile laughed. Their next stop is the small garden, I will go there to kill them. Mr. One heard Crocodile's words, he stood up and was about to work. Lin's matter is not urgent, now you have more important things. I got the information, this woman sneaked into Alabasta, you find her and bring her alive to me. Crocodile put a bounty in front of Mr. One, and the bounty on this bounty was Nico Robin, the devil's child. On the other hand, when Crocodile was looking for Nico Robin, the Lin pirates were already heading towards the small garden. This time we seemed to have good luck, and we didn't encounter the bad weather before. Looking at the clear sky, Lin was in a good mood. 
The danger of the Grand Line is not only from the weather, those ferocious fish and powerful pirates are the main dangers of the Grand Line. Reju said lazily. At this time, she was lying on a beach chair enjoying a rare sunbath, and Baby Five was evenly applying body lotion on Reju's back. Perhaps because she was born a cyborg, Reju's skin condition is very perfect. Hey, what is that? Almost as soon as Reju finished speaking, Baby Five saw that the sea area they were in turned lead gray. Maybe this is another strange undercurrent on the seabed. Reju climbed up from the beach chair, and her face became solemn when she looked at the scene in front of her. That's not a strange undercurrent, it's a giant goldfish-shaped sea king. Lin En used his observation hockey to sense the terrifying body of the fish, and his face became solemn. Sea king, is there such a huge sea king in this sea? Reju's eyes became extremely solemn. If this is a sea king, a sea king of such an amazing size might be able to destroy them under the tsunami with just one tail. There is a sea king called the island-eating monster in this sea area. Its way of eating is to swallow the entire island together, so it has such a name. No one can tell how big it is. Its excrement alone is larger than an island. Lin En remembered the rumors about the island-eating monster around the small garden. This monster was defeated by the blue demon Tori and the red demon Brokey who sent the straw hat pirates away from the small garden ten years later. It's hard to imagine that there are such terrifying creatures in this sea. Kuina also appeared. She just happened to hear Lin En's rumors about this giant goldfish, and she exclaimed. Originally, she was still working hard to hone her swordsmanship in the training room. It was Lin En who found that they were on the body of the island-eating monster, so he asked Baby Five to call Kuina over. It's starting to float up. Our ship may experience severe turbulence in a while. You must hold on to it. Lin En felt the undulating sea and said to the three women. Even he couldn't cut this huge goldfish with one sword. The women also nodded solemnly, and they had already held the railing tightly. As the giant goldfish floated up, Lin En's ship was pushed up to the sea surface several hundred meters high. Splash! The sea surface here has finally risen to the extreme, and then all the sea water fell as if it was weightless. Room. When the ship was about to fall, Lin En used the power of the surgery fruit to teleport their ship to a relatively calm sea. Before they could react, they felt their ship accelerate suddenly, and then the sky above their heads was quickly covered by a black curtain. Is it dark? Can the Grand Line even reverse time? Baby Five turned on the lights on the ship, and there was some surprise in her tone. It's not dark, it's that we entered the belly of the island-eating monster. Reju's face turned ugly. Reju is right, now we are in real danger. If we can't get out of the belly of this island-eating monster before it dives into the deep sea, then we may die in the deep sea. Lin En said to them. Lin En is a devil fruit ability user. If he appears in the deep sea, he will definitely be drowned by the seawater now. Now Lin En wants to take a gamble. He wants to see if he can dig through the body of the island-eating monster before he runs out of energy. This method sounds very risky, but it is the only way at present. Lin En doesn't want to become feces and be pulled out by this giant goldfish one day. Room. Lin En opened the operating space and found the flesh and blood of the goldfish monster directly. The goldfish monster is not domineering. Under Lin En's sword, its huge body becomes extremely fragile. After Lin En dug three times, he felt that the goldfish began to shake. Obviously, because the flesh and blood that was dug through before is no longer in the operating space, this big guy is now feeling pain. If this guy can't dive into the deep sea and get out, then Lin En and his group may die. It would be great if the scope of the surgical space could be made larger. Looking at the flesh and blood in the spherical space in front of him, Lin En immediately thought of a solution. The volume of the spherical space is determined by physical strength, but its shape is not. If the spherical space can be turned into a long strip of space, wouldn't Lin En's movement speed be about 10 times faster than now? The surgery fruit only stipulates the size of the surgical space, but not the shape of the surgical space. It's just that the ability of the surgery fruit is spherical, which also made Lin En fall into a common misunderstanding for a while. Under Lin En's manipulation, the surgical space began to slowly deform. The spherical surgical space has now begun to become elliptical, and Lin En's maximum movement distance has begun to increase. 
It's feasible. Lin En's eyes flashed with excitement, and he began to change the shape of the space fruit again. Lin En began to frantically activate his fruit ability. After consuming 70% of his physical strength, the ship of Lin En's pirate group finally saw the light again. The ship of the Lin pirates jumped directly over the sea and landed on the beach. Lin, you are awesome, we are saved. The three girls hugged Lin tightly, and they jumped up excitedly. Lin was so reliable that he could lead them to escape from the belly of such a huge monster. They all thought they were dead just now. Yes, we are saved. Compared to the joy of escaping death, the major development of the Operation Fruit made Lin feel happier. Although his strength did not increase, his combat effectiveness increased by more than 50% compared with before. Hey, someone can escape from the belly of the island-eating monster. You are amazing. A voice suddenly sounded from the woods, and then a figure taller than the big tree suddenly appeared in front of them. The trees on this island are about 10 meters high, but the huge figure in front of them is taller than the big tree. Giant tribe, there are actually giant tribes here. Reju looked at the giant in front of her and said in surprise. I hope everyone will support it and subscribe more.